So hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Kakashi adopted Naruto in the Chunin exam. Part 1. If you guys enjoy this, what if? And if you want to part 2. Comment down below. And let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So let's start the video. Chapter 1, The Path Deviates. Naruto sighed as he looked out over Konoha from atop the cliff, holding the faces of the four Hokages of Konoha. Sure, he was going to become Hokage someday. He knew that, but entering the Chunin exam, he wasn't so sure that he was ready. His mind drifted back to the mission that he and his team, Team, Ha, had completed in the Land of Waves. During the mission, all he had learned was tree walking. Sasuke had managed to awaken his shining. Shoring. Sharingan, that was it, giving him a massive boost. Even Sakura had come out better with her perfect chakra control and Kakashi sensei giving her tojutsu tips, but what had he learned? Tree walking. And he still wasn't very good at doing it. His only real jutsu was his shadow clone, and they were only really good for weakening an enemy, since they burst too easily. He was in no way ready for the Chunin exams. He needed to learn more jutsu, but how? Kakashi kept refusing to teach him, spending time helping Sasuke with his fire, and Sakura would simply pound him again. Naruto sighed. He just wasn't ready. Unless he used the Kaiubi's chakra as he did on the bridge, he was hopeless. Even Sakura could beat him into jutsu, and she was using the basic academy style, not the advanced form that Mizuki had. Naruto froze before he snarled, as he finally made a connection that he really should have made months ago. He was the only one who taught that style, and almost everyone could beat him in a spar. Mizuki had taught him a bad style, and only his pain tolerance and sheer stamina got him through the real fights. There was no choice. Until he got better, until he learned a proper style and got some more jutsu to use, he just wasn't ready for promotion. He would send a shadow clone to wish his so-called teammates good luck while he would train. Naruto rested his chin on his hands, and he began to make a mental list of what he needed to do. He would need to find a new tojutsu style, one that would suit him. Maybe something with a lot of kicks, he always hated punching, preferring to kick when he could. He would also need to learn more chakra control exercises, but where could he get the knowledge? When it hit him, Iruka sensei would be willing to help him. He could go see him tomorrow. He could also search the library for a proper tojutsu style. Luckily the librarian was one of the few who didn't blame him for the Kaiubi attack. Naruto nodded as he rose from his seat, unaware that his decision had just changed the course of the future. The next morning. The alarm sounded and Naruto pulled himself out of bed, yawning. Getting up, he staggered into the bathroom and switched on the shower, letting the shock of the cold water finish waking him up as he reached for the lye soap. Wincing at its harshness, he scrubbed himself all over to get clean, then switched off the shower and wrapped a towel around his waist as he headed for the kitchen to make his breakfast. As he did so, he glanced at the calendar. Erg, I need to do some training, but where? Iruka would know where a quiet place is. Maybe practicing my kunai throwing, I suck at it. The whistling of the kettle caught his attention, and he quickly turned off the stove before pouring the hot water into a pot of instant ramen. Instant ramen, why do they call it instant ramen? He groused, slowly stirring it. Should be called three minute Raymond, not instant Raymond, why does this take so long? Why do three minutes pass like a damn three hours waiting for Kakashi Sensei? After far too long for the blonde's liking, the Raymond was finally ready, and he grabbed a pair of chopsticks. I did Akamasu. As he ate he couldn't help but think. As good as Raymond is, I should learn how to cook. What old man Tucci said to me a couple of days ago is probably true. If I only eat Raymond then I won't grow any taller. I could always use the transformation to buy the things I need to cook. Within a minute, the cup was empty and Naruto threw it into the bin. Ah, that hit the spot. Alright, time to get dressed and then find Iruka Sensei Databeo. Iruka sighed as he worked his way through the folders arrayed on the desk before him. Although the Chunin exams were about to happen and the academy had been temporarily closed down for the first stage, the paperwork was still somehow piling up. He would even have to deal with another prank by Naruto rather than Iruka Sensei. Iruka looked up as Naruto pulled himself in through the window. Hey, uh, Iruka sensei, I've been looking for you. Iruka smiled as he said. Naruto, I'm afraid that I have a deadline, so I can't treat you to it. Naruto interrupted Iruka. Nah, don't want that at the moment. That sentence caused Iruka to stare at him in shock. I need some advice, Iruka sensei. My chakra control still sucks even though I can tree walk. What other exercises are there? Iruka leaned back, rubbing his chin thoughtfully as Naruto performed one of the best puppy dog eyes know he had ever seen a male perform. Honestly, it was better than some of the fangirls he had seen use it. Probably because of the whiskers. 
The only girl he had seen in the academy who could do better was Hinata. Well, the next stage is generally water walking. It's like tree walking but takes more chakra and you have to keep changing the amount because the water keeps flowing. Naruto exclaimed with a grin. Right. Water walking. That'll help with my chakra control and learning more. Iruka frowned slightly. After that night, I did some research into the shadow clone. Did you know that when a clone dispels, everything it learns gets sent back to the original and any other clones? Naruto looked at him blankly and Naruka sighed. Look, make a clone for me. A puff of smoke marked the appearance of a second Naruto and Naruka rose. Okay, original Naruto, stay here, clone, with me. Naruto nodded and sat down as Aruka and his clone walked out the door. A moment passed, then Naruto blinked as Aruka re-entered. Excellent. I'll head there to do it. Head where? Naruto stared at him as if he'd gone mad. The small ache you just told me about. I told your clone about it. Aruka pointed out, and Naruto's eyes widened so much that Aruka thought that they were about to fall out of their sockets. Whoa. That's cool. Freaky, but cool. Aruka shrugged. It'll help with your chakra control. Make 50 clones to do tree walking and 50 to do water walking. Every 5 minutes or so, dispel the best clone of each, and the memories of how to do it should help all the other clones do it better. Once all the clones are gone, you should be good at both. Just don't dispel too many at once or the influx of memories might knock you out. Whoa. Naruto breathed, then he lunged forwards and hugged Aruka. Thanks. I knew that you'd be able to help me with that. Thanks, Aruka-sensei. You're much better at teaching than Kakashi-sensei. Before Iruka could respond, Naruto had released him and dived out of the window. I hope he remembers that he has the exam today. Iruka sighed as he sat back down. P p p p p h h h h h h t t t h h h h h h t t t t t t t. Iruka sighed, then stood up. Lifting the cushion, he pulled out a now deflated whippy cushion that had been concealed beneath it. Looking at the whiskered chibi drawn on it, a figure giving the victory sign, he sighed with a wry grin. All right, he got me. Naruto was in the shinobi section of the library browsing through Tojutsu scrolls. He wanted to find one that would work best for him. Nearby was Lilith Levi, the retired Kinoichi in charge of the shinobi section. She had never judged Naruto for being a Jinchuruki. Currently, she was giving Naruto some advice. So you want a Tojutsu style revolving around kicks, huh? Well, we don't have many of those. She placed his finger on her cheek as she started to think. Well, actually I think I know one that might suit you well. But it's pretty old and no one uses it because it is all kicks. Most shinobi tend to use both their hands and legs in a fight. Lilith left for a few minutes before coming out with an old scroll and handed it to Naruto who opened it and started looking through it. Not noticing Lilith's smile and nod. She was right about her thoughts, it was the perfect style for him. It's called black leg style. It was developed by a fighting sea cook. It relies entirely on kicks as he was quoted saying. How would I cook if I ruined my hands? Naruto looked through the scroll and smiled. He didn't know why, but this style just seemed to call to him. Is it possible to get a copy? Lilith smiled. Of course Naruto-san. I'll make you a copy real quick. Hey, boss, watch it doin'. Hey, Kanohamaru, Mogi, Yudin. Naruto smiled at the trio of kids who were jogging up after him. Training, tree walking, and water walking, once I grab a swimsuit. Cool. Can we come? Kanohamaru asked and Naruto raised an eyebrow. Well, okay, I'll teach you tree walking when we get to the lake. You know where the small lake is near the training area 32? Naruto asked and Kanohamaru nodded. Good, meet me there in half an hour and I'll get you started on learning tree walking which helps you with your chakra control and stealth. After all, very few people look up. To make his point, Naruto placed his foot on the wall of the building and then, concentrating hard, walked up the side of it until he was on the roof. Looking down, he smiled at the shocked expressions of the three children. Well, get moving. Yes, sensei. All three chorus before sprinting off. Naruto chuckled and leaped across the alley, heading for his apartment. Arriving at the lake, Naruto quickly set up several long stakes, attaching a sheet to them to make a shielded training area. Pausing in thought, he performed his favorite jutsu, and sixty clones appeared. You, Naruto said pointing to one, head to the academy, when Team and Sakura show up, join them and wish them good luck, then dispel. The rest of you, start tree walking, except you two. You're on timing duty. I want you to see which clone is the best and have it dispel after 10 minutes, you're on trees and you will be water. You six stay to one side, you'll be teaching Ko and his friends tree walking when they arrive. Yes, boss. The clones shouted, then they split up to begin as Naruto darted into the shelter to change into his swimming trunks. Once he had done so, he moved to the edge of the small lake and summoned another 50 clones. Water walking. He commanded. Are you ready to start timing? Sure boss. 
said the clone that had ambled over to join them, a big grin on its face. This should be fun. Yeah, yeah. Naruto sighed, then he started to focus his chakra. Whoa. We never spotted that before. One of his clones marveled. Naruto blinked and looked down at his stomach, where an odd spiraling seal was fading. Oh, that. That must be the seal that the Yandame sealed the Kaiubi into. Just ignore it. Kaiubi. Cool. A younger voice crowed and Naruto fascinated. Kanohimaru, you're early. You have the Kaiubi sealed away. That's awesome. Kanohimaru said as he dragged his friends to the water's edge. Naruto sighed as he said. It's not that great. It's why so many hate me, they don't see me, they see it. The Yandame sealed it away with the greatest seal he'd ever made, so that it couldn't escape, but. Naruto looked away with a frown. The village blames me for what Kaiubi did. Kanohimaru frowned as he replied. That's just dumb, you're the boss. You're not the Kaiubi. Naruto shrugged but couldn't help but smile hearing what Kanohimaru said. Yudin leaned forwards as he studied the seal. That's amazing. I am going to learn how to do that. It's called Fu in Jutsu. I'll probably end up learning how to use it eventually. Would be very useful. Naruto supplied, then he blinked and turned to the other trunk-clad clones crowding around. Oi. Water walking, remember. The clones promptly scrambled to the edge of the lake, and soon a near-constant stream of splashes and cut-off swearing started to echo across the lake. Naruto sighed again. Okay you three, I have six clones over there who will help you. They'll support you until you get the chakra right in your feet and catch you if you fall. Go on. Thanks, boss. Kanohimaru shouted as the trio ran towards the waiting clones. Naruto turned his attention to the lake. Now, focus chakra, push it through my feet and. Glub. Bluerg. Damn it. This is way harder than tree walking. One of the clones supporting Kanohimaru explained what he had to do. Now, channel your chakra through your feet and into the tree. Once you think you have it, try to pull your foot away to check that it's ticking. This is easy. Whoa. Thanks. Kanohimaru glanced across to the next tree, where Mogi had just been caught as she slipped off the trunk. The clones repositioned her so that her feet were pressed against a bark and, frowning in concentration, she started to slowly walk up the tree again. This isn't so hard. Whoa. Kanohimaru looked the other way just in time to see the pair of clones assigned to Yudin catch the plummeting boy. As he tried to calm down, the clones carefully repositioned him. You're doing good. Keep going until you get tired, then stop for a rest. Kanohimaru made the ram sign with his hands and felt his chakra flowing towards his feet. Okay. He whispered and carefully took one step up the branch, then a second and a third. Yes. Arg. The clones caught him as he dropped and he smiled at them. Thanks. Naruto leaped for joy as he stood atop the water. Only 15 clones had been dispelled before the accumulated experience let him reach the point where he no longer had to concentrate. His remaining tree climbing clones were all moving easily up and down the trees and along the underneath of the branches, as if the oddly angled surfaces were simply the flat ground. From one side, the young trio watched in amazement. See, I told you that boss was awesome. Kanohimaru exulted as he wiped the sweat off his brow. He taught us how to tree walk in one day, who else could have done that? Yeah, he's cool, Mogi admitted, then she sighed. But I'm exhausted, how do I get home? My clones can carry you back, Naruto said as he walked towards the changing area to put his normal clothes back on. Just direct them to where you need to go. Thanks, boss Kanohimaru said as he let one of the clones pick him up and place him on the back of another clone. Hokage Mansion. Away. Hush you. Laughed the clone as it started to jog off. Thanks, boss. Yudin called as he was carried away and Mogi waved as she left. Naruto smiled and looked around. All right, dispel five at a time, Naruto shouted, and the poofs of dispelling clones soon filled the clearing. Naruto closed his eyes as the memories flooded in, then he smiled as they settled down. Damn, that's a lot of tree climbing and water walking. Well, that means that I now have a better chance of learning new things. Well, since my memories show that team and Sakura have entered the exam, I guess I should try and see if any D-rank missions need doing, I need the money. Naruto paused and looked up at the sky. I think I'll get some Raymond instead. Ichirakus, here I come. Laughing here and out of the clearing, then after a few moments, he re-entered it, muttering under his breath. Can't believe that I forgot the sheet, I can't afford to leave it behind, tonight will be too cold without it, brr. Hey, old man, am Nissan. One Naruto special please. Am stared at him in shock, and Naruto shifted under her gaze. What? Have I got something on my forehead? Naruto. Tucci asked as he emerged from the kitchen area. What are you doing here? I thought you had entered the exams. Naruto sighed, looking down at the counter. Nah. I'm not ready for them yet. Haven't learned enough, all I've got is my shadow clone. 
team has his Sharingan in fire, while Sakura can't think her way through anything and has perfect chakra control. Me, I'll just hold them back. A.M. and Tucci exchanged a long glance, then A.M. spoke. Dad, you get the Raymond started. I got this. Okay. As Tucci vanished back through to the kitchen, A.M. leaned forwards, resting her elbows on the counter. So, how did the other two take your absence? Naruto sighed as he said. I sent a clone to give my best to them, but Sakura and the team refused to listen to it. I don't know why we're still regarded as a team, I mean, the only time we work together is when we're about to be killed. What sort of teamwork is that? Sakura keeps punching me, Sasuke never speaks more than three words at a time and usually just grunts. Kakashi only ever bothers to teach the two of them. He shook his head. Well since Kakashi doesn't want to bother to teach me, then I will just learn by myself. Which reminds me. Naruto blushed as he said. Um, could your old man Tucci help me learn how to cook? I can't always just eat ramen. Aim smiled as she said. Sure Naruto-kun, I'll teach you how to cook. Naruto. A female voice gasped and Naruto spun round to find three people his age staring at him in shock. Hey, Kiba, he is she know, hello. Hello. I know we used to be in the same class, what's your name again? Hinata. The girl half whispered. Naruto grinned as he said. Well, Hinata you have a very pretty name. Hinata began to blush upon hearing this, while Kiba snickered. Hey man, where were you? Kiba asked. I couldn't see you at the exam at all after the girls leaped at Sasuke. I decided I wasn't ready, so I stayed away. Naruto shrugged. I sent a clone to wish the other two luck, but they didn't listen. Man, that blows. Kiba snarled. You mean the other two got to take the exam without you? We were told by Kurenai-sensei that all three were needed before we could enter. I'm sorry. Hinata whispered, staring at the ground, and Kiba shook his head. Yeah, well, fortunately, the scarhead was lying about never taking the exam again. We'll just have to get you stronger for next time. What happened? Naruto asked curiously. Earlier with Naruto's clone that was sent to inform his team. Where is that Baka? Sakura half shouted, glaring around. From his perch on the railing of the small bridge, Sasuke just shrugged. Maybe we should just leave him behind. Sakura growled. We're ready for this, even if the Baka isn't. Sasuke dropped onto the bridge with another grunt. Placing his hands in his pockets, he started to walk towards the academy, and Sakura quickly followed. A moment later, Sakura overtook him. Come on. We need to run to get there on time. Sasuke pulled out his pocket watch and glanced at it, then broke into a sprint. Damn it, if waiting for him costs me my chance at promotion, I'll kill the dope. As the academy came into view, Sakura snarled at the sight of a familiar orange-clad figure waiting by the door. Damn it. He knew to meet us at the bridge. Sasuke snarled. Probably wanted us to fail so that he could pass. Hey, guys, I. The figure started, only to stop as Sakura grabbed his collar. Shut up and come on. Hey, wait, you don't understand. Working together, Sakura and Sasuke dashed up the two flights of stairs, dragging the protesting form of their teammate behind them. At the door to room 301, a familiar figure was waiting for them. Just in time, another 30 seconds and you'd have been disqualified, Kakashi said, not looking up from the orange book he was reading. Go on, the test is waiting for you, and it's a good thing you are all here, as if one of you had decided not to come, none of you could have participated. Sakura snarled at the protesting blonde as she shoved him through the door. You almost cost us our chance. As Sasuke followed them through, the door closed and locked behind them. Sasuke. Ino barreled through, knocking Sakura sideways as she latched onto Sasuke, then a voice sounded. Enough. Everyone grab a number and get to a seat, now. Sakura grabbed a ticket from the proffered fishbowl and scurried to her seat. Once she sat down, she glanced around. That's odd, she thought, what happened to Naruto? His eye-burning orange should be easy to spot, but I can't see him. Oh well. It's not as if he'd be of any use to us. Not compared to Sasuke. Welcome to the first stage of the exams. The intimidating figure at the front of the examination hall growled. I am Ibiki, the main proctor of this stage. The rules are simple. You start with 10 points per team, and each time you are caught cheating, your team loses 2 points. Once a team has lost all its points, it will be removed from the exams. There is no appeal, the examiner's decision is final. You will answer the first 9 questions and in 1 hour, you will have the choice of answering the 10th question, although different rules will apply. You may begin. Sakura gulped and turned over the first page of her sheet. Well, these questions are advanced, but I know the answers. Oh, I hope that Naruto doesn't screw things up trying to cheat, we all know what a klutz he is. Ayakigen, Hinata whispered as she activated her keke genkai. Without moving, she let her gaze drift around the room. Aha, Sakura is already answering the questions, I can copy off her and. What? 
Where's Naruto? I know that I saw him come in, but I can't see him. What's going on? Has he been thrown out already, and if he was, why are Sakura and Sasuke still here? I don't understand. At the front of the room, Marino Ibiki frowned as he counted the students yet again. 154 of the seats are filled, but there should be 155, given that two of those seats are planted for others to copy off. 87 people from Kanoha, 30 from Suna, 21 from Aim, 6 each from Kusa and Taki, and a team of 3 from the new village of Atagakur, so which group is missing one? I can see both, so I know that they're not the problem. Damn it, I hate it when things don't add up properly. Sasuke activates his Sharingan. From where he was sitting in the back row, he could see Sakura's right arm, and he used his Sharingan to duplicate the movements, letting his arm copy her work. I guess that she can be useful after all. He mused with a small smirk on his face as he finished filling in the ninth question. Deactivating his Sharingan, he looked around, then frowned. Where the hell did the dope end up? I am not going to get thrown out because that idiot panicked about the test. Heh, chances are that he wouldn't even be able to put his name down correctly. How troublesome. Shikamaru thought, glancing around covertly. I know that I saw Naruto come in, then Ino sent him flying, and he must have done a shunshin or something as he vanished in a cloud of smoke, but where did he go? Did he simply step out to avoid this test or something? No answer presented itself, and Shikamaru turned his attention back to answering the questions. What a drag. Ibiki snarled, his frustration at having failed to work out which team was undermanned evident in his voice. Time's up, put your pencils down. It's time for the final question. Fail this question and you'll be banned from participating in an exam ever again. Quit now and your team will go with you, but your team will be allowed to try again later. Now, how many of you think that you can pass, because the nine questions you've answered are easy compared to the tenth? Ibiki glared at the remaining genin, slowly ratcheting up the killing intent until one of the Suna genin cracked. Sorry guys, but. The unfortunate genin was the stone that triggered the avalanche, and Ibiki hid his smirk as the number of departing genin grew. After a few moments, the flow decreased and he looked at the remaining group. Heh, only 10 teams remain. Although one of them is the Kami Dam team of two. Ah well, may as well end it now, or Anko will be whining about how I'm spoiling her fun. Ibiki growled. All right, the tenth question. You all pass. For a moment, everyone was silent, then the pink-haired girl slammed up into a standing position. What? Ibiki smirked as he said, you all pass. This was a test to see if you were willing to take the risks required to finish a mission. When you go out there, you won't have all the information you need, and sometimes the client will lie to you. Ibiki pulled off his bandana, and several of the genin turned white at the sight of the scars and holes on his shaven scalp. I gained these scars because my team was given false information and we were ambushed. I was tortured for information, but I didn't break. You didn't break. Crash. Ibiki blinked as a banner unfurled in front of him, even as the broken glass from the window finished hitting the floor, and he sighed as he donned his bandana again. Reaching out, he moved the banner aside and stepped forwards, glaring at the lady who had made such a dramatic entrance through the now glassless window. Anko, you're early. The shorter woman smirked at him as he glanced at the banner that proclaimed her to be the sexy and single proctor of the second exam, Mitarashi Anko, then she turned her attention to the staring genin. Heh, ten teams, huh? You pruned them back for me. All right, scumbags, the next test is a training area 44, follow me. Before Ibiki could say anything, Anko had dived out of the window, followed by several of the genin, while the rest piled out through the door. Collect the papers and compare them to the list. Ibiki directed the proctors. Find out which team was missing one of their members. If it was a Kanoha team, their Jounin sensei and I are going to talk. I'm sorry, Hinata muttered sadly for the dozenth time, refusing to look up at her two teammates. I'm not strong enough yet, I'm holding you back. Shino and Kiba exchanged glances, then Kiba sighed. It's okay. We'll help you get stronger, then we can participate in the next exams. I agree. Shino drowned. Why do you ask? Although I am advanced in my clan's techniques, I am unconvinced that I am strong enough to advance, given that we have been genin for only half a year. I still let you down, Hanada whispered, then she looked up as a familiar voice said something. Kurinai sensei. Ibiki? Kurinai asked, her red eyes filled with understanding and Hinata nodded, her gaze dropping back down to the ground. I cracked and couldn't take the pressure. I'll drag Kiba and Shino down. Kurinai knelt in front of Hinata. Hinata, that lie was supposed to do that. It just shows that you know you're not ready to be a Hinata. I'm proud of you. Really? Yes Hinata, that question was meant to simulate whether you could accept a mission that if you failed, would get your team killed. If you're not certain that you can do a mission, you shouldn't accept it. Kurinai said, then she glanced up at a bird flying overhead. Something's come up and I need to get going. 
You too, get Hinata home safely, and I'll see you all tomorrow at 10 for a mission and training. Sure thing, Sensei. Kiba replied as Shino nodded silently. As Kurunai strode off, the trio resumed their progress. After hearing the story from the three Naruto flinched. Damn, if I had gone I would have likely just dragged down Team and Sakura. I guess it was for the best that I didn't go. Hinata seemed to deflate more before Naruto placed his hand on her head. She looked up to see him smiling. It's okay Hinata, I think you did well. I mean come on, so what if you got psyched out? It just means you guys will be more prepared for the next exam. Not to mention it's not like you were the only one. You guys said only 10 teams passed that part. Kiba frowned as Akamaru barked. You're right buddy. Naruto looked at Kiba. Kiba, do you mind translating for us that don't speak dog? Akamaru asked how those two were able to get into the exams without you. Oh no. Naruto shrugged, turning to the bowl of ramen that had been placed on the counter. I thought it was either Kakashi being a lazy git like normal or the other ninja trying to ignore me again. Didn't seem at all unusual to me. As he picked up his chopsticks, a puff of smoke erupted by his side to reveal the form of Kakashi. Hey, sensei. Fancy a bowl. Naruto. Kakashi growled, grabbing him by his collar. What? Naruto yelped as they vanished. What just happened? Kiba asked after a silent moment. Hinata and Shino both shrugged, confused as he was. Hinata couldn't help but worry for Naruto though. At the forest of death, a few minutes earlier. The gate slammed shut behind the genin vanishing into the forest, and Anko pulled out a wrapped stick of dango, only to pause as one of them appeared. What? We just counted the forms, Anko-san. They said nervously. There's 29 of them. So? Anko shrugged, then her brows furrowed. Hang on. That means that there's a team that isn't three, but only two. How the hell did that happen? Who bailed? It's worse than that. A voice said from behind her, and Anko looked round. Oh, hi Ibiki. Worse. We know who the missing genin is. Anko raised an eyebrow, then looked at the ten jonin from the various villages arrayed behind Ibiki. Uzumaki Naruto. Ada Kakashi dropped his book as all the other jonin turned to stare at him. What? You pass two of your team through instead of stopping them at the door, Kakashi, Ibiki growled, transfixing Kakashi with his glare. All three of them were there. Kakashi protested and Ibiki shook his head. Anko looked up from the pile of forms. I don't have a form for the Uzumaki brat. Got one for the Achiha and the screaming fangirl, though. What the hell is going on? Shadow clone, Ibiki stated. I watched a recording, and one of Naruto's bunch and entered the room and was dispelled. What were you thinking, Kakashi? I know you can tell the difference between a clone and a genin. Um, well. Find him and bring him here. Now. Ibiki stated and Kakashi vanished in a sealess shunshin. Damn, the copycat got pranked. Anko whistled and Ibiki sighed. We all did and now it's too late to interfere. I need to know why the kid did that. My Raymon. A voice protested as Kakashi reappeared and dropped Naruto onto the ground. Damn it, sensei, I paid for that. You owe me another bowl of Raymond. Several sniggers alerted the irate team to the fact that he was in the company of multiple high-ranking people, and he looked around. Sensei, what's going on? Well, Kakashi said grumpily, it would seem that you've broken the rules and left the test halfway through. What? Naruto yelped. I never entered. I sent a clone to wish Sakura and the temple good luck, that was all. You never entered. Ibiki repeated, causing Naruto to gulp nervously upon noticing him. Why would you not want to be promoted? After all, you want to be Hokage, right? Hell yeah. Naruto half shouted, then he looked at the ground. And I can't be Hokage if I suck, I need way more training, and Kakashi doesn't give it to me. Everyone stared at Kakashi as Naruto continued his rant. I have to work with a girl who has the idea that saying hello is to punch me and a team best described as. What did Mogi call him? Ah yes, that's right, Duckbit McGrumpapants. Several of the assembled jonin quickly smothered their laughter. Damn it, we're not even a team. Sakura's constantly mooning over the team and refusing to train because it'll wreck her figure, as if she isn't more flat-chested than I am, well the team is so transfixed on killing his brother that if it doesn't give him power, he doesn't want to know. The only reason he puts up with being around me is that he can test his tojutsu on me since I don't go down easily, and he's gotten worse since getting those red eyes. He's got the Sharingan and loads of jutsus, Sakura's got perfect chakra control, and enough brains to think through anything, all I have is clones and stubbornness. That isn't enough. If I'm going to be A, I need more than that. You have more than that. Kakashi protested, only for Naruto to glare at him. Yeah, I have tree walking from you and water walking from Aruka sensei this morning. Shadow clone, transformation, substitution that works maybe one time in ten, tree, and water walking. That's fucking it. Thanks to Mizuki, my tojutsu sucks and I can't get help because you're too kami damned lazy. 
Bakashi struck out at Naruto as he screamed the end of his rant, knocking him unconscious, then he looked around him. It's not that bad, honestly. It does explain why Konohamaru was going about learning tree walking from Naruto earlier, though, Hiruzen said, walking around the group and looking down at Naruto. Kakashi, I am disappointed. I'll punish Naruto, you don't need to, Kakashi said quickly, only to stop as Hiruzen glared at him. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, I am disappointed in you, Kakashi. As a Jonin sensei you are meant to help them to progress, but from what Naruto has said, you have failed in that. Even if that wasn't the case, your failure to ensure all three of them entered together has already left a very large black mark on your record. Hokage-sama. No, Hiruzen stated. Irrespective of whether they reach the tower or not, your other students will not be allowed to advance and will be pulled from the exam. Furthermore, the future of Team 7 will rely entirely on their reaction to this and you will not be allowed to interfere. Understand. Kakashi nodded slowly. Good. Ot Naruto moaned. What hit me? The gate closed behind them as Sasuke and Sakura dashed into the forest. Running up one of the trees just inside the boundary, they paused. All right, Sasuke grunted. We don't have the dope to slow us down, so we head out and find another team. We follow them until they fight and we see which team wins while I use my Sharingan to copy them. Once the fighting is over, we follow the winners and attack them for the scroll, then head for the tower. Sakura nodded, her mind filled with amazement at Sasuke's brilliance. Sasuke saw her nod and leap to the next branch, Sakura hot on his trail. Damn it. Snarled the black-clad ninja, dropping the scroll back onto the pile of bloody sand that he'd retrieved it from. Earth scroll. Sakura's eyes widened as Sasuke gently stroked the pocket holding their heaven scroll. Head towards the tower, I'll catch up with you. He whispered and Sakura nodded. Moving as quietly as she could, she eased away from the Suna team that had mercilessly killed the entire AIM team. Run. Sakura glanced backward and screamed as a wave of sand slammed through the trees behind her, barely missing Sasuke who was holding the required scroll in his hand. Without bothering to think, Sakura spun and sprinted as fast as she could, trying to outpace the crashing sand that was smashing through the forest. What is he? Sakura gasped as a spinning branch flew by her head. Sasuke grunted. Less talk, more run. Die. A burst of adrenaline flooded Sakura's muscles as the insane boy screamed from behind them, and she accelerated, as did Sasuke. Seeing an open area, they burst out of the undergrowth and found themselves at the edge of a river. Logs. Sakura shouted, pointing at the floating items. We can cross. Sasuke nodded and they leaped from the shore to the first, then the second and to a third as something roared behind them. As they landed on the fourth and final log, it shifted underneath them, and Sakura gulped as realization dawned. Oh, shy. The water seemed to explode as the river monster bucked underneath them and the duo were hurled into the canopy. Just before she impacted with a branch, Sakura saw one of the river beasts lunging at the trio that had been pursuing them, then everything went dark. Erg. HN. Sakura's eyes flickered open slowly and the world slowly resolved into a cave with Sasuke sitting at the entrance, a silhouette against the greenery stretched across the opening to disguise it. How? Long. Full day, Sasuke grunted, glancing out of the camouflage. I was starting to think you'd sleep until the end. Did anything happen? Sakura asked weakly and Sasuke shrugged. Hiding in the distance managed to get a few more from it. Other than that, nothing. Sakura nodded and sat up, slowly stretching as her limbs protested. Water in the canteen, Sasuke said, nodding to the small pile of camping equipment. I'll reseal it when you're ready to move out. Sakura smiled. Sasuke knew how to seal stuff already, he was so cool. Good thing the Baka wasn't with us, Sakura noted. He'd have gotten killed and kicked out. I wonder what happened to him. Don't know and don't care. Sasuke shrugged. Dobe would have got us thrown out somehow. Yeah. Sakura agreed. He's such an idiotic klutz. Sasuke paused for a moment, memories of Nado's insane yet somehow workable plans flicking through his head. He still doesn't know how Naruto had done the impossible and into a windmill shuriken, while his shadow clones were a trick that he still hadn't been able to copy, since it was a layered hand seal technique that relied on the user learning one string of hand seals. Perfecting them to the point that they weren't actually needed anymore to shape the chakra and then funnel through a second seal. His Sharingan meant that he could only learn the overseal and not the underlying chakra manipulation required. It was somewhat ironic that a high Uga would have a better chance of learning that technique from simple observation. How Naruto had learned it when he couldn't do a normal bunshin, he had no idea. Here's a food pill, Sasuke said, handing it over. Eat it and get a drink, then tell me when you're good to move out. I want you to be full, otherwise, we might get into trouble. Sakura hid a smile. Sasuke did care for her. The tower. Sakura gasped as they landed in the undergrowth just before the clearing that held the structure in question. 
Making up, she paused as Sasuke clapped his hand on her shoulder. Sakura, there's someone nearby. Someone with a lot of chakra. Kukuki Kuku. A voice laughed and Bo Jenin spun round to find themselves facing a woman with a grass village hit I ate. A moment later, they were hit with a huge gust of wind that hurled them into the air, away from the sanctuary offered by the tower. Sakura screamed as she hurtled towards the canopy, impacting harshly and feeling her left arm shatter under the impact. Crashing to the ground, she whimpered as her ankle twisted, and she felt something give before her ankle began to feel like it was filled with molten lead. Preventing her from running away, she could barely think through the pain. A dozen meters away, Sasuke landed heavily, bruised, but without the broken bones that she had suffered. Saws. She gasped, clutching her broken arm tightly to her. Who? Who was that? I don't know, Sasuke admitted, his Sharingan scanning around him for any sign of the ninja who had attacked them, but she wasn't a normal genin. Not with that amount of power. Well said. The woman sneered as she dropped down lightly. Hello, Sasuke, you have something that interests me. Sasuke blinked while Sakura started muttering. She's chosen to go after us. Sasuke-kun is her target. Something that. Sasuke. She's after your eyes. Well done. The woman said sarcastically, she then disappeared and reappeared in front of Sakura and knocked her out before tossing her out of the tree. Now that your little horror is otherwise occupied, I think that. The woman vanished in a fireball, then reappeared from behind a tree. Nice, Sasuke. Not nearly as good as your brother's fireballs, but not bad. Sasuke snarled. What do you know about Itachi? Oh, he and I used to work for the same people. I got to know him quite well. Sasuke pulled out a kunai and leaped at the woman, his sharingan flaring red. The woman laughed as she pulled out her kunai and blocked him, then her grin widened. Three tomo now, I see. You are getting better. Sasuke blinked, and the instant of distraction was enough to let the woman throw him into a tree. Pulling himself to his feet, he lunged forwards again, only for his strike to be blocked. An instant later, the woman lunged forwards and bit him on the side of his neck. Ah, erg. As he collapsed from the sheer agony flowing through his veins, he saw the woman smiling. Use my gift of power well, little Ache. When you want more, come to me. Kukuku kukuku. The world went black as the jagged lances of acidic heat seemed to stab through him. Several hours later, in the tower entrance. Aruka found himself summoned in the tower entrance. As the smoke was clearing he heard a voice say weakly. Help. Us. Aruka blinked as he saw the sight before him. Sakura was barely standing as she used a branch as a makeshift crutch, on a makeshift stretch that was tied to her by rope, was the unconscious form of Sasuke who she had to drag to the tower. What happened? Strong Genin attacked us. My arm is broken, my ankle as well. Sasuke down. I don't know why, it hurts. Aruka nodded and gently picked up Sasuke. I'll be back in a moment. Stay put. As he vanished in a shunshin, Sakura finally gave in to the pain and collapsed on the floor beside the two unrolled scrolls. Four hours later, in the tower at the center of the Forest of Death. Report. The doctor looked at the Hokage and the teacher for a moment, then down at the clipboard he was holding. Both patients are stable. Haruno suffered three breaks in her left arm, they have been realigned and placed in a cast, with a proper medical, the bones should be set within a fortnight. She broke her right ankle completely, it has been reset, but her walking on it while dragging the Achiha behind her did not do it any good. It will be two months before she is allowed to walk anywhere due to the damage she did to the tendons and muscles. Honestly, I'm not certain if she will be able to walk without a limp. As for the Achiha, several cracked bones and a seal on his neck that resembles that applied by Arachimaru to Midarashi Anko, only more advanced. The doctor read. The seal seems to be. For lack of a better description, rooting itself into his chakra network. Until we can place it under a containment seal, we cannot let the Achiha out of the hospital. Here is inside. All right. Until they recover, they are both off duty. What about Naruto? Haruka asked and Hiruzen frowned. I never got round to replacing Mizuki, did I? No, Hokage-sama, but why do, you have got to be kidding. Hiruzen smirked. He seems to have shown a talent for teaching students. He taught Kinohimaru and his friends Mogi and Yudin tree walking in a single day. Hokage-sama. And Anbu said, appearing and proffering a scroll. The list of those who made it. Twelve in total, four teams, two from Kanoha, one from Sound, and one from Suna. Here is an accepted the scroll. Hmm. Team 9, Hai Uganiji, Higurashi Tenten, Rock Lee. The Suna siblings, Gara, Kankuro, and Tamari of the Sand. The Sound team, Dosu Kanuda, Zaku Abumi, and Kintsuchi. Temporary team Beta, Yakushi Kabuto, Okado Yoroi, and Tsurugi Misumi. Interesting. Yes my lord. The Anbu said. They are assembling for the speech. Very well, Hiruzen said, walking towards the door. Haruka finds Naruto and starts teaching him how to be a classroom assistant. 
He starts tomorrow morning. Yes, Hokage-sama. Iruka sighed. And while you are at it, you might as well see just how badly the other teachers mistrained him and see if you can sort it out. Yes, Hokage-sama. Iruka grinned. The next day, at the academy. But the. Boss. Naruto grinned as Konohamaru's exclamation of shock echoed off the walls of the classroom. It's Naruto-sensei now, Konohamaru. I've been tapped to help Iruka sensei keep you all under control. One of the other children snorted. Yeah, right. There's only one of you and. Sweet Kami. Konohamaru, Mogi, and Yudin exchanged grins as several dozen Naruto clones spread out, each one taking a position by a suddenly silent child as Iruka entered. Hello, class, Iruka said, calling on all of his self-control to hide his grin. As you can see, I have a new assistant that will be helping with your physical training. Naruto, head out, give me another 30 to 40 clones, and then head over to training field 9 for your lessons in Tejutsu under Mido Gai. You got it, sensei. Naruto saluted, then he vaulted out of a window, landing silently. Iruka shook his head. Normally we would be continuing with a leaf exercise, but it has come to my attention that three of you can do tree climbing. Could those three raise their hands and tell the class who taught them? Konohimaru grinned as he, Mogi, and Yudin all raised their hands, then Yudin spoke up. It was Naruto-san who taught us, he used his clones to help us do it and make sure we didn't get hurt. Iruka nodded. I got the story from Naruto, and it seems that his method is more efficient than the normal one, although it requires the teacher to concentrate fully on one student at a time. As a result, it isn't a surprise that Naruto managed to come up with it. He's a one-man army. All right, I see he has more clones waiting, let's head to the trees. With a resounding cheer, the students flooded out of the door while the clones left via the windows. Aha, Naruto. It is good to see you this youthful morning. Naruto froze for a moment, then glanced around. To his left was another green spandex-clad figure looking like a smaller version of Mido Guy. The other two genins with them were a dark-haired boy with a marked resemblance to Hinata and a brown-haired girl with her hair pulled up into two buns that looked a bit like panda ears. Um, hi. Ah, you have yet to meet my youthful team. Guy exclaimed, giving Naruto an admittedly slightly disturbing grin and thumbs up. First is Hai Uga Niji, a genius of talent. The aforementioned Hai Uga simply nodded, then resumed staring at nothing in particular. Thinking about his training plans for the month. And here is Higurashi Tenten, a genius of skill. Tenten looked up from the kunai that she was polishing and smiled. Hello. Hi. Naruto managed, somewhat disconcerted by the fact that a girl was talking to him, rather than shouting out or hitting him, AM didn't count as he'd known her so long. And we have my youthful student, a genius of hard work Rock Lee. Naruto stared at the chibi guy, then rubbed his eyes and resumed staring. It didn't help. The teen was still looking too much like Guy. Um, hi. Hello, it is good to meet another who is willing to devote so much time to improving himself. Naruto blinked as Lee stood in the same thumbs-up pose as Guy, with a very similar smile on his face. Imino-san was kind enough to inform me that you were capable of utilizing the Shadow Clone. Guy continued and Naruto nodded. May I ask how many you can make? Not sure. Naruto shrugged. I've got about 60 helping Aruka-sensei with his class now. For a long moment, Guy just stared at him. SS60. Could be 70. Naruto shrugged. Since I learned tree and water walking, it seems to take less energy to make them. I could probably make a couple of hundred more easily if you want. Naruto looked round in confusion as everyone else stared at him with varying expressions of shock, then Niji spoke. You learned water walking. How long did it take? About three hours. Naruto shrugged. I used a whole load of clones and dispelled the best performing one every five minutes. The experience mounted up quickly. This shocked the team even more. Interesting. Guy mused, stroking his chin in thought. Very well, let us spar now so that I can see what style you use and what style might suit you. Naruto coughed. Um, I have a style I'm trying to learn. Lilith-san helped me pick it out from the Shinobi library. She said since I wanted to rely on kicks it would suit me best. I rubbed his chin. Lilith Levi had been a very skilled Tejutsu user before she retired. So most likely she was right. Do you mind telling me what style she picked out for you, Naruto? Naruto pulled out the scroll. It's called the Black Leg style, supposedly it was developed by a seafaring chef who learned to fight. He would only use kicks to avoid ruining his hands. Guy's eyes went wide as he said. Did you say the Black Leg style? Naruto nodded. Yeah, why? May I see the scroll? Naruto handed him the scroll. Guy examined it and said in awe. This is the most youthful day. Naruto, you don't realize how youthful this Tejutsu style is. It is known as one of the five greatest styles. It is even more powerful than my strong fist or the Hyuga clan's gentle fist. Everyone who heard that was shocked to hear this. 
Niji's eyes had gone wide as he looked at Guy in shock. That can't be possible Guy sensei, the gentle fist is the strongest jutsu style there is. Guy shook his head. No Niji, sadly it isn't even close. The five great jutsu styles have mostly been lost. As only those who have the qualifications can read the scrolls containing them. This is because each style unlocks a unique power in the user. Those five styles are the black leg style, which unlocks a unique power known as hockey, which allows the user to enhance their strikes, as well as predict every movement the opponent makes through their intent. The resikin, which unlocks a unique form of chakra that protects the body known as holy chakra. The Heyman, which grants the user the ability to use the sun's power in their strikes. The anything go style, an ever-evolving style that made the user into a human Sharingan and allowed them to learn any other Tajutsu style to add to their arsenal. And finally, the water stream rock smashing fist allows the user the ability to remain calm no matter what goes on around them, as well as the ability to produce water with their very movement. Okay so the first style is obviously from One Piece, Sanji's signature fighting style. The other four styles will not appear in the story, so don't worry. But the other four styles are Resikin from Yu Yu Hakusho, Heyman from Jojo Bizarre Adventure, the Anything Go style from Ranma, and of course Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist from One Punch Man. Everyone quickly started to look at the scroll. But found they couldn't even comprehend it. Tenton frowned as she said. Why can't I understand it? I can read the words and see the pictures. But it's like they go into my mind and then disappear. I nodded as he handed back the scroll to Naruto. That is proof that this is one of those five styles. It keeps anyone unable to use it from reading the scroll. This is an extremely hard style to master. But I believe Lilith Sen was right if she said you can use it. Well, I guess we should begin your training. I'm sure I have some of Lee's old training weights you can use. Are you ready to train? Naruto nodded. He wasn't going to give up. He would grow stronger and become Hokage. Yes Guy Sensei, I'm ready. And that concludes today's practice, Iruka said with a smile. I am glad that you were all able to take at least several steps, we'll be repeating this next week. Ah, Naruto. What happened? I. Style. Of. Training. Naruto managed to gasp before his legs gave out. Only Aruka's reflexes stopped him from measuring his length in the dirt. You found out why he is called the Green Beast of Konoha, huh? Aruka chuckled. Alright. Clones, dispelled by pairs. Naruto, prepare for a whole load of memories about overexcited children getting tree walking wrong. Naruto snorted with laughter, even as the first clones vanished into puffs of smoke. Once the last clone had dispelled, Naruto looked up. You weren't kidding. I think only Konohamaru's team and that Hyuga girl managed to do it right. Well, Iruka said thoughtfully, the Hyuga clan are well known for their advanced chakra control. Their fighting style depends on it, gathering it and releasing it in controlled bursts. Wow. Naruto breathed. I never knew that. Well, you did miss out on quite a few lessons when you were younger, Iruka said gently. Now, I've set out a dozen books for you on the table in my classroom, so when you are ready, create some more clones to read them. In the meantime, here's your paycheck for today, so perhaps you can treat me to Raymond for a change. Naruto accepted the money bag from the grinning adult and tucked it into his pocket before making a familiar seal. The clones that appeared promptly ran off into the academy to begin their re-education and Naruto stretched, wincing a bit as he did so. So, how did you enjoy teaching? Naruka asked. Naruto grinned. I see now why you like it so much. He admitted. And on that note, for all the times I mucked around in class, I'm sorry. I guess I just got into some bad habits before you took over. Iruka shrugged as they started to walk towards the main gate. Well, at least you're making progress in catching up to where you should be. Thank you. Naruto grinned. I don't know why Kakashi didn't tell me about how Shadow Clone helps in learning, it's almost like he wanted me to be weaker than the team. It probably never really occurred to him. Iruka shrugged. He might be one of the strongest jonin in Konoha, but you three were the first team that he has had. He may be a great jonin, but that doesn't mean that he's a good teacher. He never taught me anything other than tree walking in the two months I was assigned to him. Damn that bastard. Sakura howled as she stared at her leg that was in a cast. It's all his fault, I know it. In a way, maybe, Kakashi said as placatingly as he could. You and Sasuke shouldn't have entered, but Naruto tricked me by sending a shadow clone instead of showing up himself. I'll kill the bastard. Sakura hissed. He knew what would happen. I'll complain about him to the Hokage personally. Haruno Mabuki grated from where she sat by the window. Dereliction of duty, treason, betrayal of his team. I'll have him thrown into the deepest, dampest cell there is for the rest of his miserable existence. That could be a problem as he didn't break any of the laws, Kakashi said quickly. Look what he did to my daughter. She might be forced to walk with a limp for the rest of her life because of him Mabuki almost shrieked and Kakashi winced. It was Arachimaru who. 
I bet that the bastard is allied to him. Mibuki overrode his protests. He will pay for this, even if I have to carve him up myself. Kakashi swallowed nervously as the situation spun out of control. What do you mean that Sasuke has been removed from the exams? Arachimaru hissed. The silver-haired genin medic Nin looked back at him without flinching from his anger. One of his teammates chose not to enter the exam and sent a shadow clone to wish them luck. Due to a mix-up, the presence of the clone got them into the first exam, and by the time it was discovered that they should have been refused entry, they were already in the forest of death. The Hokage decreed that irrespective of what happened, both Sasuke and his teammate Sakura would be removed from the tests as soon as they reached the tower. Both of them are currently in the hospital, having been officially declared unable to continue. Orochimaru growled, his eyes narrowing in rage. That is not good news. The girl blames the Jinchuriki for not supporting them, Kabuto smirks. When Sasuke recovers, he'll probably do the same, especially if I help him reach that conclusion. When that happens, he'll probably ask to join you just to get revenge on his teammate. Orochimaru paused, then slowly an evil smirk spread across his face. Yes, an excellent plan and one that fits in very well with the planned attack. It shouldn't be too hard, Kabuto said with a matching smile. All I need to do is point out that while Sasuke was getting injured fleeing from Gara, Naruto was having a cushy time helping the academy brats learn chakra control. Kukuki Kuku. Arachimaru chuckled. Your plan has promise, Kabuto. I look forward to hearing about your next report. Thank you Lord Arachimaru. Kabuto bowed. Asuma looked up as a familiar figure approached him and his team. Ino spoke up once she saw the figure. Hey, that's Naruto, isn't it? Didn't he quit the Chunin exams? He never entered, Asuma said, remembering the rumors that had been flying around the Jonin information network. He sent a shadow clone to wish his team good luck, and it somehow got the other two in. Kakashi got blacklisted for that. Hi, Naruto said, scratching at the back of his head. Um, you're Siratobi Asuma, right? I am, Asuma said, and Naruto nodded. Iruka sensei said that you were one of the only wind element types in Kanoha and... Wait, Asuma commanded, his eyes intent. You're a wind type yourself. Naruto nodded. Yup, well wind and fire. Iruka said you could give me a few hints on how to start my elemental training, since you and someone called Danzo are the only wind users in Kanoha, and he said you would be the easier of the two to find. He also said you had a fire element as well, so you could show me both beginning exercises. I see. Asuma nodded. So, have you learned any exercises for it yet? Naruto shook his head, and Asuma picked up a fallen leaf. Holding it in his hand, he frowned slightly in concentration, and the leaf promptly split in half. That was the first exercise. He said to the wide-eyed boy. You focus your chakra on the leaf and cut it. I picture it as a pair of thin blades grinding against each other to sharpen them, you might do something else. It all depends on what you can get to work for you. Cool. Naruto half shouted, then he leaned forwards. Um, can you show me again, please? With a grin, Asuma picked up another leaf, and a second later, both halves fluttered to the ground. Okay, I think I got it. Can you show me the beginning fire exercise? Asuma smiled. Sure kid. He grabbed another leaf and held it in his palm till it ignited and turned to ash. This is easier than the wind element. All you need to do is imagine your chakra burning the leaf. Okay, thank you so much. The boss will want to try it. Wait. Asuma commanded, staring at the boy boss. Yeah. Naruto grinned, one hand rubbing the back of his head. I'm a clone, boss sent me to see if I could pick up a few tips from you. What are you doing? Quit poking me. Ino stepped back, eyes wide as she pulled her hand back to her side. You're solid. Shadow clone. The clone announced proudly. Everything I learn goes straight back to the boss and my bros when I dispel. Boss is getting thwacked by Lee at the moment, even shadow clone isn't helping him, although he's getting good at his kawarimi. He's swapping with his clones to avoid Lee's attacks. Shikamaru deduced and the clone nodded. Yep, Bushy Brows Jr. packs a wallop. He may not be able to use chakra, but he's scary fast. But he's the best person for boss to practice his new tojutsu style again. Whoop. They're taking a breather, gotta go. Thanks. The clone vanished in a puff of smoke. Ino sighed, turning her attention back to the remaining two males. I'm going to the hospital to check on Choji. She declared and Shikamaru glanced up as he moved a piece, causing Asuma to moan. I'll come with you. He said as Asuma sighed and started putting the pieces away. I heard that they'll be removing the cast from his leg today, although he'll need crutches for a while. Yeah. Okay. Ino shrugged. I heard that they're going to release Sakura today as well. Shikamaru paused at that. Sakura. Haruno Sakura. Naruto's teammate. What happened to her? Hey, four. Head. Ino's standard greeting faded as Sakura turned to face her. 
Sakura's eyes burned with a madness that made Ino uncomfortable. It was like she could snap at any moment. Ino. Ino shivered slightly at the coldness in Sakura's voice. I heard that you were being released today and... Sakura snorted and turned to look out of the window. Ino sighed. Sakura, I'm not here to gloat. I was worried about you. You should be worried about Naruto Baka because I'm going to kill him for what he did to me, Sakura growled out. Ino frowned in confusion. What? He was nowhere near you when. Sakura's head snapped around, her eyes narrowed in anger. Exactly. He abandoned us, betrayed us, and ran away. I'll make sure he never runs away again. Ino stepped back, staring in shock at the girl who had once been her closest friend and who she no longer knew. Outside the window, an Anbu pocketed the tape recorder and vanished in a shunshun. Odd and that should do it. Kabuto smiled as he lifted his hands from Sasuke's torso. Your ribs are now as strong as they were before they were broken. Sasuke sat up, then slowly stretched. After a moment, he nodded. Thanks. Thus doing my duty. Kabuto smiled, although his gaze flickered to a small shadow on the windowsill. You went up against Arachimaru, you were lucky to escape. I wasn't strong enough. Sasuke mused, almost ignoring the Mednin. Then you need to find another way to get stronger. Kabuto offered. Perhaps your sensei can suggest something. Maybe new exercises. HMPH. Sasuke snorted. Kakashi, teach. He's a lazy bastard who is always late. Then perhaps you could ask another Jonin to help you train in your spare time, Kabuto suggested. I heard that your teammate Naruto is being trained by your sensei's eternal rival Mido Guy. He is considered the best Tejutsu master in Konoha, if not the elemental countries. I hear Aruka's giving him remedial lessons as well. What? Sasuke growled. He decided to betray the team and got rewarded with extra training. The Budo hit a smirk as he tried unsuccessfully to calm Sasuke down, making sure that he didn't say anything that could incriminate him when the Hokage listened to the tape being recorded by the Anbu on the wall outside. His smirk briefly broke free as Sasuke stomped out of the room and then he began tidying the ward. Just because Kanoha was going to be destroyed didn't mean that he could slack off in his duties. Here is inside and pressed a button to stop the tape before looking up at Kakashi. The silver-haired Jonin seemed to have aged dramatically as he listened to the recordings. Hokage-sama. I. I let you have Team 7 because you specifically asked for it, Hiruzen said, his quiet voice somehow filling the office. You wanted to teach Naruto and I was willing to let you do so, but it seems that my decision was an error. Hokage-sama. Kakashi started, his voice pleading, and Hiruzen shook his head. This was your last team, Kakashi. You heard yourself how unstable two of them are, this sort of thing was what you were meant to watch out for encounter. Kakashi slumped, his gaze fixed on the ground. As of today, Team 7 is no more. Here is inside. It's uncertain if Haruno will be able to stay Shinobi with the damage done to her leg. If she had trained more often the damage might not have been as severe, but because she didn't and was on a diet the damage will likely be permanent. She at best will be put in the Shinobi reserves. As for Ichiha, if he wishes to remain as a ninja, he must first submit to a full psychiatric evaluation from Yamanaka and Moichi and Marino Ibiki and undergo whatever remedial training is deemed necessary. Failure to comply within the week will result in them being returned to civilian status. And Naruto. Kakashi sighed. Harizen pushed forwards a file and leaned back as Kakashi read through it, becoming more and more depressed as he did so. Finally, Kakashi returned the file to the desk. Naruto has progressed more in the last week than he has done in all the months he spent in Team 7, Hiruzen said, his voice gentle but the message brutal. I reports that with the aid of Shadow Clone, Naruto is quickly mastering the first stage of the Black Leg Tojutsu. He is also going through training weights abnormally quickly as his body adapts within hours. The fact he has begun to eat more than just Raymond is helping as well. His weapon skills have also improved out of all recognition, and he has begun to learn the sword, not to mention he has calmed down quite a bit and is beginning to think things through. My son reports that Naruto has already completed the leaf cutting exercise and is moving on to waterfall cutting. While with his fire element he has already completed leaf burning and stick burning, he's now working on boiling water. He's also begun to study fuinjutsu and is taking to it like fish to water. Akashi seemed to slump even more as Hiruzen continued speaking. I am redesigning Naruto as an independent genin and will be rotating him between teams 8, 10, and team guy. Leon team guy has decided that Naruto is his eternal rival. Hiruzen chuckled slightly. At this time, I have promoted Aruka to special jonin and placed him in charge of Naruto's overall progress, with Naruto also being assigned to aid him in the academy. Furthermore, given how much he has improved, I will be telling him about his parents and giving him his inheritance within the week. Given how much he has improved, he may be able to learn the Rasengan. Bakashi swayed as if someone had thrown a kunai through his heart. Hokage-sama, 
please. Bakashi, here is in commanded. You are barred from contacting him for the next two weeks. He is no longer your concern. Your old position in Anbu is still open if you want to re-enlist in it or I'm sure that I can find a mission or two for you to perform. For a moment the two remained silent, then Hiruzen spoke again, his voice softer. Kakashi, not everyone is suited to teaching. You are one of the best when it comes to completing missions, but no one is great at everything. Kakashi seemed as if he was about to break his Hiruzen's side. If it makes you feel better, Naruto doesn't hate you. Kakashi looked up, his one eye filled with hope. As Hiruzen continued speaking. After the two weeks are up, I'll allow you to try and patch things up with Naruto. But it's up to him if he forgives you. If he does forgive you, maybe you can teach him a few. Bakashi bent his head. Thank you Hokage-sama. An unknown location. Agoromo Atsutsuki sighed as he watched what was happening. It was hard to see how far his oldest son had fallen in many worlds. In some he was able to redeem himself, in others he became completely corrupted and Asura was forced to destroy him completely. But Hagoromo always held out hope till the end. It seemed this world was one of the worlds where Indra was too far gone. He could see the corruption in his aura affecting his reincarnation. Suddenly a voice spoke up from behind him. You will need to decide soon Hagoromo, if you don't you could doom that world. Hagoromo turned to see a man standing behind him. The man had long white hair that shone like a pearl. His hair was done up in a braided ponytail. His face was pale and handsome, his eyes were golden with slit pupils that seemed to look through him. He was wearing a simple black and white robe as he stood before Hagoromo. Hagoromo sighed as he said. I know Kyleth, but I find it hard to abandon one of my children just because he has fallen. Kyleth shook his head with a sigh. You will need to make your choice soon, Hagoromo. You won't be able to give both of them your power in this world. If you don't make your choice, then I will for you. With those words, Kyleth walked away. Hagoromo shook his head as he said to himself. It is not as easy as Kyleth think Kyleth. He returned to watching Sasuke, trying to figure out why his aura felt different from the other Indra reincarnations. It was much lighter than the others, almost as if it was second-hand. Amic. Why Lee and Naruto aren't allowed to hang out in public. A week after end of second round of exams. Naruto had just finished sparring with Rock Lee. He was getting quite good at the basic level of black leg style. He had taken to it like a fish to water. As the two relaxed after their spar, they were chatting about various things. Sadly, spending so much time with Rock Lee and Mike Guy had affected Naruto a little. Thus causing the scene that Niji and Tenten walked in on. Lee. Naruto. Lee. Naruto. The two genin hugged with manly tears about their youthfulness. That is when the horror began. Niji and Tenten who were close by were horrified as reality seemed to change and soon they were standing on a massive pirate ship with a lion figurehead on the sea. Instead of wood, there was grass beneath their feet. The ship was rocking with the sea much to the two's shock. But this was only the beginning of the horror. Because Mike Guy had noticed what was going on. What a youthful display. Shouted the Tajutsu master as he hugged the two genin, crying as well. That was when it all went wrong. Because the moment Mike Guy hugged the two crying genin. A voice sounded behind Niji and Tenten. This is one super moment. The two turned to see a man with blue hair and a buzz cut and massive arms in a pose. This wouldn't have been that bad. If the man hadn't been wearing only an open tropical shirt and a speedo with his nipples shining. The two genin began to scream in horror. A few hours later, Hokage office. Here is in Fasipam as he read the report. Niji Hayuga and Tenten Higurashi were both currently in the hospital for mental trauma. Naruto and Rock Lee had developed a new version of the sunset. But it was completely different and only got worse the moment my guy joined in. Why am I still I should have retired ages ago. Let my successor deal with this shit. I do not own either the enhanced sunset Jinjutsu or the location. I'm pretty sure I got the idea from a high school DXDX Naruto crossover, just can't remember the name. I just remember the idea came from a scene of Naruto and Serzich's hugging that caused a wasteland to appear with geysers of fire. The setting through was the Thousand Sunny from One Piece. The man in the speedo was Frankie the Cyborg, post time skip version. Nipple lights are actually optional. Chapter 2 Training Days. It had been two weeks since Naruto had decided to not take the exams. Currently it was morning and Naruto looked at himself in the mirror, admiring his new outfit that Kurenai-sensei and Hinata helped him pick out. Of course they did it on the suggestion of the, but still it was nice of them. His current attire fit him rather well. He wore a burnt orange short sleeve shirt. Black style pants with black combat boots. He had changed to combat boots to help with the higher level of the black leg style. They would be dangerous to practice with sandals. Of course they were made of the same chakra conductive material as the regular shinobi sandals. Around his waist was a dark blue utility belt with five different pouches, useful for carrying scrolls. 
over his shirt was a dark blue trench coat with a white spiral on the back. He didn't know why, but Kurenai had said the Hokage had suggested it. His hit I-8 was now tied to his left arm. On his head was a wide-brimmed black hat with a blue plume. To finish off his look was a burnt orange and blue scarf that Hinata had bought for him, as she said it looked good on him. Little did Naruto know, she hadn't bought it, she had knitted it. Hinata enjoyed knitting as a hobby and had knit this scarf for him as a birthday present. She had just decided to give it to him early. Naruto smiled as he attached his kunai pouch to his right leg. He was looking forward to today. He had a big plan for today, today he would try to meet Kaiubi. Yesterday he found a book about Jinchuruki. It had mentioned that it was possible to visit the seal in converse with the Biju. Naruto planned to do just that. He would of course send out his usual several hundred shadow clones to train in other things, like Fuinjutsu, Kinjutsu, trap making, and his chakra control. But the real him would be here trying to enter the seal. Naruto left his apartment with a smile on his face. Today was going to be a good day. Little did Naruto know how right he was. Because today would be a day that would change his life forever. Hinata sat on the bed in the guest room of Kurunai's apartment. Her eyes were staring at the wall. There were bags under her eyes from lack of sleep. Well, her eyes themselves were bloodshot from crying for the past few hours. Her hit I-8 was no longer tied around her neck. Instead it was around her forehead to hide the seal that now branded on her forehead. The disgraced bird seal, a seal only put on Hyuga clan members who were seen to have no potential at all. In other words, a seal is only used on those exiled from the clan. She was no longer Hinata Hyuga, now she was just Hinata. The only bright side of the seal was the fact that it didn't have the pain feature that the caged bird seal did. After failing the first exam things had become unbearable at the Hyuga compound. Until yesterday she was called into the elders room where she was told she was banished. Then held down as her own father applied the seal. All the while he called her disappointment and a disgrace to the Hyuga name. Luckily Kurunai sensei had been willing to let her live with her. Anata slowly stood up. She needed hope, maybe watching Naruto would help her. He was the only thing she really had left. Honestly dropping out of the first exam had at least one bright point. Her and Naruto were starting to get closer. She had even managed to give him a present in person. She just hoped he liked the hat. Little did Hinata know that today would be a day that would change everything for her and when she looked back on it would be the best day of her life. Training Ground 41. Naruto walked into the empty training ground and looked around before smiling. This place would work. After summoning the various clones and assigning them jobs, Naruto sat down and began to meditate. This was what the book said to do. He took a deep breath and closed his eyes. In Hokage office a time. Hiruzen sat in his chair looking at the man across the desk from him. The man was his student Jiraiya, the Toad Sage. It's been a while since Jiraiya. Yep it has sensei. How's Naruto doing? I heard Kakashi was training him, I bet he's gotten pretty good if the bridge and wave is anything to go off of. Hiruzen sighs as he pulls out a folder and hands it to Jiraiya. The Toad Sage accepts the folder and begins to read. Naruto's education was stunted and sabotaged, this had only come to light recently. I told Kakashi that he would need to help Naruto fix the damage that was done. Instead Kakashi neglected his job and only taught Sasuke and gave Sakura occasional tips. He completely ignored Naruto, instead using him as a way to help train Sasuke. Jiraiya put down the folder as he frowned. I can't believe Kakashi would do this to Naruto. Jiraiya took a deep breath to calm down before shaking his head. Well either way, we have officially proved that Naruto is a genius just like his dad. I mean he made that much progress in just two weeks. Hiruzen nodded as he puffed on his pipe. Yes he began to train on the day of the first exam. He quickly began to learn the things he needed. The shadow clone is perfect for him. At this rate I'm certain Naruto will surpass both me and his father by the time he is 25. But please don't call him a genius. Naruto hates that term, he believes that the only thing that matters is hard work. Hiruzen nodded. I agree with that, I was the dead last of the class. Now look at me, I'm the strongest of the three. Hiruzen chuckled before he said. I was planning to tell him about his heritage soon. Would you prefer I do it today while you're here? Hiraya nodded. Yeah, it's time to face the music. Should I call for him now? Or would you like to wait a few more hours before you get castrated? Hiraya shivered. You don't think he would do that do you? Them personally? No, not at all. Jiraiya relaxed, but the next words made him tense up again. But knowing him, if you don't earn his forgiveness, he will likely make certain that you're never able to do your research in Kanoha again without being caught. Um, you know, let's wait a few hours. I need to get some things to make sure Naruto doesn't kill me. With those words Jiraiya jumped out the window. Hiruzen chuckled as he watched Jiraiya flee. Probably a good idea. Suddenly and arrived. Hokage-sama, I bring a message from Hiashi-sama. Anbu handed Hiruzen a scroll. 
The old man read the scroll before burning it. So it's time. I just hope she can bring herself to forgive Hiyashi. At the training ground. Naruto had been meditating for an hour. He was getting tired of sitting still. Damn it, this isn't working. With that thought Naruto opened his eyes, only to find he was no longer in the training ground. Instead he was in a massive sower and was floating on top of water. What the hell. He stood up, not noticing the fact he was standing on the water without using chakra. Did someone throw me in a sower without me noticing? No that's not possible, I'm pretty sure I would notice being carried. Naruto began to walk along the sower, after a few minutes he arrived in a large room with a cage. The doors of the cage were held shut by a paper that read. Seal. Naruto walked forward to try and see in the darkness when suddenly a pair of huge red eyes opened. Suddenly a claw shot from the cage and stopped an inch from Naruto who managed to stop from jumping back. He knew the seal would stop Kaiubi from hurting him. A grin appeared in the darkness as a deep voice sounded. Well this is surprising. I thought for sure you would have jumped from that. So why does my jailer honor me with his presence now? Naruto sat down nah, I know the seal stops you from actually hurting me unless I enter the cage. For why I'm here, well I thought it might get lonely being stuck in a cage all alone for 14 years. So I decided to come and try and lighten up your day. Kaiubi just stared at the young blonde in confusion. Um, what? Kaiubi was struck speechless by what Naruto had just said. He could sense that Naruto wasn't lying. He really was here to try and cheer him up. Naruto gave Kaiubi a sad smile as he said. It hurts when you're forced to be all alone doesn't it? I've been through that, I didn't have many people who cared about me growing up. Since I know what it's like I decided that I would make sure you don't have to go through it as well. So I'll be your friend. Kaiubi frowned as he said. Boy do you know who I am? Naruto frowned. How could I know who you are if you've never told me your name? Kaiubi was once again struck speechless. Other than his father and his youngest brother Ashura, no one had ever cared about his name. As he looked at Naruto he swore he saw the image of Asura overlap with Naruto's own for a few moments. Is this Asura's reincarnation possible? No, I'm probably just seeing things. Kaiubi thought for a few seconds before he said. My name is Kurama. Naruto grinned. It's great to finally know your name Kurama. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Future Hokage of Konoha. As he said this he tipped his hat. Kurama couldn't help but grin as well, it was infectious. Naruto looked around before he said. You know, I just realized. This is my mind correct. I guess I give new meaning to the same mind in the gutter huh? Is it possible to change it? Kurama chuckled at the joke before he spoke. Sadly Naruto, your mindscape is stuck like this. It's a reflection of what your experiences have done to your psyche. Maybe in time it will change, but for now you're stuck with a sower. If it makes you feel better, it already looks a bit better than it did while you were a child. Naruto sighed. Oh well, is there any way I can make your time here a little better? Well you could allow me access to your senses. It gets boring just sleeping and looking at a sower all the time. All you would have to do is allow me to do it. Naruto grinned. Sounds good to me. Anything else I can do while I'm here? Kurama waved his paw. Nothing else right now. I'm going back to sleep. With that Kurama laid his head down and closed his eyes. Suddenly Naruto found himself back in the training ground. He smiled as he sat there. He felt like he made some progress. He really did want to be friends with Kurama. Naruto frowned as he heard something. It sounded like someone stifled a sob. Naruto stood up and moved over to the area where he heard the sound. There was a shuffling sound. Naruto looked behind the tree to see Hinata. Um, hi there Hinata. That's when Naruto noticed the bloodshot eyes as well as how tired she looked. Hinata, are you okay? Is there anything I can do to help? Hinata had spent the last hour watching Naruto meditate. She had been confused as to what he was doing. A little ways away was his army of shadow clones, all practicing various things. She smiled seeing Naruto growing stronger. He never gave up, no matter what anyone said. She was also happy to see that he was wearing that hat she gave him. Seeing the hat brought up her hopes that one day she would be able to walk by his side. Suddenly tears began to fill her eyes. It didn't matter how much she looked up to him though. It didn't matter how much she hoped. She would never be able to be with him. She was just a disgrace. Even her own clan didn't want her. Why would Naruto want her either? Suddenly a boy sounded from beside the tree. Um hi there Hinata. Hinata looked up to see her crush standing there looking at her with concern. Hinata, are you okay? Is there anything I can do to help? Hinata looked up and to her shock saw Naruto standing over her. In the moment she was looking at him she noticed that he was wearing the scarf that she had knit for him. The next moment she was hugging Naruto, crying and holding on to him for dear life. Naruto just held her, unsure of what was going on. Hinata, what's wrong? You can tell me. Hinata slowly sobbed out what had happened. As she did Naruto held her, trying his best to not let his anger consume him. 
He just hugged her tighter and tried to soothe her. You're not a disgrace Hinata, you're too good for that clan. If they can't see your strength then they're blind. Naruto kept holding Hinata and cheering her up. He might not have known Hinata well during the academy. But during the two weeks he had been training, he had started to get to know her better. Now he would consider her a friend. After about 10 minutes Naruto helped her stand up. Come on Hinata-chan, let's get you to Kurunai-sensei's place. He didn't even realize he had used Chan with her name. Hinata nodded as Naruto helped her along. Thank you Naruto-kun. Before they could leave the training field though, and appeared in a body flicker. There was a woman with long purple hair and a cat mask. Naruto Uzumaki, Hinata Hayuga, you are both to report to the Hokage's office. Hiji needs us. We'll be there shortly. They nodded as she disappeared. Naruto turned to Hinata who was still leaning against him. Are you okay to see Jiji Hinata-chan? Hinata slowly nodded, blushing as she finally realized that Naruto was calling her Hinata-chan. Yes, I will be alright to see Hokage-sama. But then let's go see Jiji, then afterwards I'll treat you to some ramen. Hinata's blush increased, it sounded like Naruto was asking her out on a date. Naruto opened the door and entered, quickly followed by Hinata. Hey there, Jiji. Nico said you needed me and Hinata-chan. That's when Naruto noticed the man with the white hair standing in front of the Hokage's desk. Strapped to the old man's back was a black sheath that held a katana. Who's the old guy, Jiji? Hiraya grinned as he said. I'm so glad you asked. Suddenly kabuki music began to sound and he did a dance. I am the conqueror of women everywhere, the being who rules over all things manly, the great super pervert and toad sage of Mount Mayaboku, Jiraiya that he slammed his hand on the ground and a large toad appeared under him while he struck a pose. Naruto looked at the toad sage before shaking his head. I'm so disappointed. Jiraiya fell off the toad, who gave Naruto the toad equivalent of a thumbs up before disappearing. Jiraiya stood up and dusted himself off as Hiruzen chuckled. Naruto-kun, Hinata-chan, I called you both here for a specific reason. Naruto-kun, the reason I called you has to do partially with your condition. If you want, Hinata-chan can wait outside while I talk to you. Hinata chose this moment to speak up. Do you mean the fact Naruto-kun has the Kyuubi sealed inside him? Everyone stared at Hinata in shock. Hiruzen spoke up slowly. Hinata-chan, how do you know that? One of the elders told me when I was seven. They wanted me to stay away from Naruto-kun, calling him a monster. But Naruto-kun isn't a monster, he's a hero. Suddenly a male metallic voice sounded from Jiraiya's back. Haha, Kishina's son found a keeper. She reminds me so much of Minato. The two genin stared at the katana that had unsheathed itself slightly and spoke. Naruto was the one who spoke. Holy shit, that sword just talked. Before Jiraiya or Hiruzen could answer, the sword did it for them. Thank you, thank you, and for my next trick I shall perform the dance of my people. Naruto couldn't help but ask. Can you really dance? There was silence for a few seconds before the sword started to laugh. Oh my Kami, he really is Kashina's son. She said the exact same thing when she first met me. My name is Shinjetsu. I'm your new sword kid. Wait a minute. Who is Kashina? You didn't tell him here, Zen. Shinjetsu, that's the whole reason we called him here. Well I'll take care of it myself then. Kid, you are the son of Kashina Yuzumaki, the previous Jinchuruki of the Kaiubi no Kitsune, and Minato Namek is the Yellow Flash. The white-haired pervert whose back I'm on is your godfather, who apparently abandoned you for the last 14 years. Do me a favor and kick him in the balls for me. Hiraya looked at the blade with betrayal in his eyes before he fell over cupping his balls. Naruto hadn't just kicked him in the balls. He had kneed him right in the groan with full force. Jiraiya spoke in a high-pitched voice. How could you I thought we were friends. Hey, I might like your book thanks to Kashina introducing me to it. But you lost any credibility the moment you abandoned your godson. Wait, this guy wrote a book. Yeah, a really good book called The Tale of the Utterly Gutsy Shinobi, you were named after the main character. The rest of his books are trash. If I remember right, the others are called Itcha Itcha Paradise. Here is in coughed before he said. As much as I enjoy watching this. I think we should continue the discussion, although it seems Hinata-chan will be joining us, since you didn't give us much of a choice, Shinjetsu. Eh, uh, she's already proved she's on his side. Not to mention the crush she has on Naruto helps. Naruto and Hinata both blushed before Naruto said. Wait, Hinata has a crush on me? I thought she just wanted to be my friend. He looked at Hinata who was blushing so much that steam was rising. But she managed to nod before hiding in her coat. Not exactly realizing what she had done thanks to her overheating brain. Naruto was dumbfounded to hear this. Shinjetsu started laughing again. Oh Kami, he's inherited Kashina's denseness. Well good luck girl, I'm rooting for you. I'm going to leave the discussion to Hiruzen now. Hiruzen sighed and muttered something about the damn sword being just as mischievous as any Uzumaki clan member. Naruto-kun sits down. Once Naruto sat down Hiruzen then asked. 
Do you want Hinata-chan to stay? I don't mind her staying. I trust her. Hinata blushed as she felt her chest grow warm hearing that Naruto-kun trusted her. Hiruzen nodded as he made several hand seals. Now I can tell you the full story. Well I guess I should just come out and say it since Shinjetsu decided to just shout it out. Your father was Minato Namikas and your mother was Kashina Yuzumaki. With that Hiruzen began to explain everything. How Minato and Kashina met, how they married and how she got pregnant with Naruto. The day he was born, someone attacked and ripped them out of Kashina. How Minato couldn't trust anyone with the Kaiubi other than his own son. How his last wish was for Naruto to be seen as a hero. How Hiruzen wanted his identity to be kept secret, but a leak from a civilian council member destroyed that idea. How Jiraiya had to leave to kill the rumors of his survival to protect him. How Kakashi fell into depression and became an, spending all his time not on missions, watching over Naruto. Naruto stared out the window that was completely blacked over. His eyes were full of tears as he said. So my parents did love. Before anyone else could speak, Shinjetsu spoke up. Kid, your parents were insanely happy to know that you were going to be born. I can't tell you how many times Kashina would just sit at the house rubbing her pregnant belly and humming a song. I'm certain if Kaiubi hadn't been ripped out of her, she would have spoiled you rotten. Hell it got so bad that one day I told her to be quiet that I already knew about her being pregnant. She locked me in the kitchen cabinet for that. I caused Minato quite a bit of confusion when he opened the cabinet to get a glass, only to find me there. Naruto was confused as he asked, but why the cabinet? Not to mention, what happened to the glasses? Shinjetsu didn't speak for a second. When he spoke, his metallic voice had confusion evident in it. That's actually a good question. I don't know what happened to the glasses. As for why the cabinet, I'm not really sure. All my wielders have been Yuzumaki clan members. Yet I still don't understand your clan. But then again, the clan is made up of hyperactive redheads. Hiruzen coughed. Moving on, since you have begun to fix the damage done to your education, I have decided to give you access to your family home early Naruto-kun. This way you can have access to the training material you need. Jiraiya will actually be escorting you there. Hiruzen then turns to Hinata. Hinata-chan, I called you here for a reason. Do you want me to send Naruto-kun out while we discuss it? It's about what happened yesterday. Hinata looked at Naruto, and he grabbed her hand and gave it a squeeze while smiling at her. He can stay, he already knows about what happened. Here is inside and nodded as he pulled out a scroll. Your father banished you to protect Hinata. Hinata froze before she whispered. What? Two weeks ago, after you dropped out of the exam, your father came to me. The elders were trying to use the fact you dropped out as a reason to have been branded with the cage bird seal and forced to quit being a shinobi before being married off to a noble family. Your father managed to stop it, but to do it he had to make sure you were banished from the clan. But why? Shinjetsu spoke of his spot where Jiraiya had leaned him against the wall. Isn't it an obvious girl? Once you were banished from the clan they would lose their grip on you. Hiruzen nodded. Shinjetsu is correct, he also did it so that he could free you of any seals. Hiruzen handed her the scroll. In that scroll is the counter seal needed to remove the disgraced bird seal, as well as scrolls in some of the Hyuga clan techniques. Hinata hugged the scroll, crying as she did. Naruto was the one who spoke up. Why did he say those horrible things then? Hiruzen sighed. He had no choice. He had to play that role to make it seem like he wasn't trying to protect Hinata. If they had realized what he was doing, they would have stopped it. Hinata began to cry harder before she hugged Naruto crying into his shoulder. The blonde shinobi patted her shoulder slowly, knowing that she was hurting. Soon Hinata had fallen asleep, the lack of sleep finally getting to her. As she slept she clung to Naruto, not wanting to lose his warmth. Her tiredness and her emotional state granted her the courage she would normally not have. Shinjetsu began to chuckle. Yeah, I don't think we are going to be able to separate her from him. I guess he's going to have to carry her with him to check out his new house. But before you go, strap me to your hip kid, you might as well get used to carrying me. Naruto summoned a shadow clone that helped put Hinata on his back, blushing when she was put on his back. It seems that Hinata was more developed than the rest of the girls from their class. He then strapped the katana to his waist. He then turned to Jiraiya as he said. All right pervy sage, lead the way. Jiraiya fascipumed, ignoring the laughter coming from Shinjetsu. Don't call me that, now let's go. With that Jiraiya led Naruto out of the office, after Hiruzen had dropped the privacy seals of course. They had stopped by Kurinai's house to try and drop off Hinata, but somehow she had super strength in her sleep and refused to let him go. Because of that Kurinai had let Hinata stay with Naruto. She knew the young blonde wouldn't do anything. Not to mention it might help the two get together. Almost all the people in the village were rooting for Hinata. Jiraiya soon led Naruto to the Yuzumaki compound. Naruto gasped as he looked at the place. It was big, not as big as the other clan compounds, but it had three houses already set up. 
Each had two stories, there was also plenty of space for new buildings to be put up. The land around it was as large as the entire Hyuga compound. Is this where my mom and dad lived? Yep kid, this is the Yuzumaki compound. A compound that was built at the same time as the Senju and Ichiha compounds. It was built for Yuzumaki clan members who were visiting Konoha. Sadly after the destruction of Yuzushio, it went basically unused except for Kishina and eventually your father. But one thing that can be certain, this is the best defended compound in the entire village. I bet Kayubi could fire a tailed beast bomb at it and not do any damage. Gureya coughed awkwardly as he said. Um, actually that has been proven. During the attack one of the three fired tailed beast bombs hit the compound. It was completely fine. Gureya turned to Naruto, ignoring the laughter coming from the sword strapped to his godson's hip. Naruto, I need you to place your hand on the gate. It will read your chakran Kiyu in as the one in charge of the estate. We can enter together. Naruto did as he said and placed his hand on the gate. The seals began to glow, and soon the gate swung open allowing the three into the compound. Hey pervy sage, if you couldn't enter before, how did you get Shinjetsu? Because I wasn't in the house. I was in the Hokage vault for 14 years. Your mother brought me with her when they sealed Kaiubi inside you. One of my abilities is that I increased the healing factor of the Yuzumaki clan for my wielder. She was using that to stay alive long enough to seal Kaiubi. If she hadn't been impaled, she would have survived. Naruto nodded in understanding. Unwilling to speak as he stood in the living room of his parents' home. On the mantle of the fireplace was a picture, it was of his father and mother, but his mother was pregnant. He moved closer and just stared at the picture, unable to look away. It was then that he felt Hinata stirring on his back. He felt her lean away and yawn. Where am I? Naruto carried her over to a couch and set her down. Hinata upon realizing she had been carried by Naruto went bright red. You're in my new house, Hinata-chan. You kinda passed out and wouldn't let go of me. So we brought you along. Hinata's face was reaching new shades of red as she stuttered out. I'm sorry about that Naruto-kun. Naruto shrugged. It's fine, I did promise you Raymond later. So we can get some after we finish going through the house not to mention I could get to know you a bit better. I mean you have a crush on me, but I barely know you. Hinata nodded quickly, somehow her inner self taking control. I would love to get Raymond with you, Naruto-kun. Naruto looked at his sword, who was snickering. Shinjetsu, do you know where the pervy sage is? I think he said something about checking the library. Most likely he's grabbing the things he will need to help with your training. He's already decided to take you as an apprentice. Naruto nodded, before he grinned. Hey Hinata-chan, come with me. I got an idea that I think pervy sage would agree with. Hinata led a blushing Hinata to the library. There they found Jurei looking through the scrolls, on a desk was a small pile of scrolls. He looked up from the scroll he was looking at. Oh Naruto, Hinata, what do you two need? Herbie Sage, since you're going to be training me. Do you mind if Hinata-chan trains with us as well occasionally? Both of them looked at him in shock. Hinata's face was quickly reaching critical redness while Jurei was actually thinking. She's been expelled from the Hyuga clan, so I could actually train her, not to mention Hiashi was one of my students during his genin days. Her Byakugan and chakra control could come in handy. Not to mention, Naruto having a training partner would probably be useful for both their progress. Only problem would be her sensei might not be willing as it could get in the way of team training. But it's definitely worth a shot. He answered slowly. I would need her sensei's permission. If she gives permission then we can try it out. If she can keep up then sure. Naruto cheered before hugging Hinata. That was the straw that broke the camel's back and Hinata sunk back into unconsciousness. Only this time the lack of sleep got the better of her and she was out for the better part of the day. Thus they had to put off their Raymond for another day. A week later, training ground 41. Hinata entered training ground 41 for her training with Jureya sensei Kurenai-sensei had allowed her to join training with Naruto and Jureya sensei twice a week. On the condition that Jureya didn't try anything perverted towards Hinata. The training ground was filled with Naruto clones, all practicing various things. Some were practicing with wooden swords. Others were going through the katas for black leg style. While other groups were working on chakra control and nature transformation. While one last group was off to the side practicing the first stage of the Rasengan. In the center of the training ground was Jureya and Naruto, in front of Naruto was a large scroll. Jureya looked up and said. Ah if it isn't my respectful student. Glad you could join us today Hinata. He looked at Naruto as he said. I signed the contract while I talked to Hinata real quick. He stood up and walked to Hinata. So are you ready for your training assignment Hinata? Hinata nodded, she was ready. In the last training session, Jureya had tested her elemental affinity. She learned that she was a fire and lightning type. After learning about her affinity, Jureya had taught her the elemental training for those two types. 
So last session we learned about your chakra affinities and began training in it. I assume you have continued those outside these sessions. Hinata nodded once more, Jiraiya smiled as he said. Good, now I have a tejutsu scroll that I got from. With your body type you need a tejutsu style that is flowing, as opposed to the regular gentle fist which keeps in place. This style is called gentle steps. This tejutsu style was developed by your mother Hinata. Hinata gasped as she asked. Why was it in the Yuzumaki clan library? Your mother Hitomi was good friends with Kishina Yuzumaki. When the gentle steps was declared as an abomination by the elders. Hitomi entrusted her scrolls to Kishina. Thus it was stored in the Yuzumaki clan library. Hinata, you will be learning the gentle steps. He handed her the scroll. Hinata accepted the scroll in shock and hugged it to her chest. It was something written by her mother. A tejutsu style that would likely suit her perfectly. She couldn't help but smile at Jiraiya. Thank you so much Jiraiya sensei. She bowed her head to the man. No problem Hinata, now why don't you go practice with it, I'll check on how you're doing shortly. Once she had walked off, Jiraiya turned to Naruto who had finished signing the toad contract. Good, now you remember the hand signs right. Naruto nodded eagerly. Now I want you to perform. Try to put as much chakra into it as you can. You need to summon the boss toad to get approval. Naruto went through the hand signs and bit his thumb before slamming his hand on the ground. Summoning Jutsu. The sheer amount of chakra he released a visible aura around him. But the puff of smoke nothing appeared, instead Naruto disappeared. Jiraiya's mouth dropped. He recognized what had just happened. Naruto had just been reversed. That meant that a contract had a higher claim to Naruto than the toad contract he had just signed. That's when it hit him, the Yuzumaki had a summon contract, but no one was sure what it was. The only thing that was known was the summons were last seen during the fall of Yuzushio, it was because of those summons that not a single member of the enemy army survived. The Kanoha reinforcements had only reported seeing clouds fill the sky while lightning rained upon the island, along with the roar of something massive. That's when he heard a voice behind him. Um Jiraiya sensei, where did Naruto come go? Jiraiya was not looking forward to having to explain exactly what happened to Hinata, or the sensei for that matter. He just hoped that Hinata didn't have the protective streak of her mother. The Lost Valley. When the smoke cleared Naruto found himself in a beautiful valley. The grass was a vibrant green, and the very air felt as if it was alive and happy to see him. Suddenly there was a rumble behind him, and a female voice spoke up. Boy who are you, and how did you get here? Naruto turned and was shocked to see a huge dragon standing behind him. It was easily three times the height of the Hokage Tower. The dragon had white and blue scales, on its chest and shoulders were four purple orbs. Its wings were feathery and white, and each movement made some kind of dust be released into the air. For those who haven't realized, this is the first of the two Yu-Gi-Oh cards referenced, this is Stardust Dragon. Although in this, the dragon is known as Selene, the Cosmic Dragon. That's when Shinjetsu spoke for the first time in a week, after yawning of course. Naruto, what's going on? Why did it feel like we were just summoned? The dragon's eyes went wide as she said. Shinjetsu is that you? Um, Selene, it's been much too long. But why are we in the Lost Valley? Naruto, what were you doing before we got summoned here? Herbie Sage had me sign the Toad contract and perform a summon. That explains it, the Yuzumaki clan contract most likely sees you as the clan heir. Thus the moment you tried to summon a Toad, you were instead reverse summoned to the Lost Valley to sign the Dragon contract. Wait, this boy is in Yuzumaki. But he has blonde hair, not red. He has his father's hair. But he's without a doubt in Yuzumaki, few injutsu talent, denseness, and hyperactivity included. I will need to take him to the boss's summon. He will need to meet him. The dragon leaned down and extended out a hand that could easily carry a horse. Young Yuzumaki, I will take you to see our boss, Slifer the Sky Dragon. Naruto who was still stunned to hear his clan could summon dragons, climbed onto the dragon's palm before she took off. Yes the boss is Slifer the Sky Dragon. It's fitting seeing as I wanted a baddest dragon. I mean Slifer is massive and just pure awesome. Ten minutes later, Naruto found himself in a large grotto with an opening in the ceiling. In front of him was a massive red serpent like a dragon. The dragon was coiled in on itself so Naruto couldn't tell exactly how big the dragon was. On its head were two mouths, the bottom one spoke, and a deep and ancient voice came out. So are one of the survivors of our allied clan. It is a pleasure to see a surviving Yuzumaki clan member. Especially one with the ancient blade Shinjetsu by his side. Hey who are you calling old, you senile old worm? I'm a spring chicken compared to you Slifer. Before an argument could begin Naruto coughed. Um, could we move on to what I was brought here to discuss? Of course Hatchling. Let's talk, I need to see what kind of person you are. Um, how do we do that exactly? Oh don't worry young one. Just stand still for a few moments. With those words Slifer gently placed one claw tip on his head. 
After a few seconds he pulled it away and said. You've had a hard life hatchling. But you never gave up, you would make your clan proud. Slifer waved his claw and a smaller humanoid dragon raced off to grab something. Does that mean I can sign the contract? Indeed hatchling, I will allow you to summon the dragons. But know if you ever abuse our power, there will be consequences. The small dragon came back with the contract in hand. Naruto quickly took it and signed it, noticing that the previous signer was named Ashina Yuzumaki. Naruto remembered that Shinjetsu mentioned he was the clan head during the fall of Yuzushio. Once Naruto had finished signing, Slifer spoke again. I shall send you back home hatchling. I look forward to the day you call upon my clan strength to aid you. With those words Naruto vanished. While Slifer rested his head on his paws again. To think Asura's reincarnation would be our latest signer. I am certain that he will become a great shinobi. I just hope this isn't a sign that I will one day have to be summoned again. With those thoughts, Slifer closed his eyes and drifted off into sleep. His dreams included fighting alongside his long-gone friends against a massive beast with ten tails. Naruto rested on the roof of his apartment building, watching the stars. As he did, he thought about the things he had learned over the month. They made him question his dream. How his father sacrificed him for the village, Jiji's rocky relationship with his son because of the position. Would he have been able to sacrifice his own son to save the village? Would he be able to put his family second to his job? Naruto shook his head, no he wouldn't. In his mind, family was sacred, something to be cherished. An ideal that came from growing up as an orphan. He spoke up, asking a question of the blade resting beside him. Shinjetsu, do you think mom and dad would be disappointed in me if I gave up trying to become the Hokage? Depends on why you would be giving up exactly. I don't think I could make the choices necessary to become Hokage Shinjetsu. Having to choose between family and the village. Knowing that the mission I sent someone on could be their last. I don't think I could do it. Shinjetsu was silent for a bit before he spoke. Then no, I don't think they would be disappointed. In fact, I think they would be proud of you for realizing your own shortcomings. But what would you aspire to be instead? I want to become the strongest shinobi in the village and help Kinohimaru become Hokage. I want to become strong enough to protect those I love, no matter what. That's a good dream to have, Naruto. Reach for that peak Naruto and don't give up on it. Don't worry about those who can't see you for you Naruto, focus on those who see you as the person you are. Remember these words Naruto, to reach your dreams you must abandon your fear. Look forward to it. Move forward and never stop. You'll age if you pull back. You'll die if you hesitate. If you keep those words in mind, then I will always have your back partner. Yes I used Quincy's and Jetsu's words, they work well, so thanks tight Kubo. Naruto grinned as he said. Then I will always push forward Shinjetsu. I will become stronger than any shinobi this village has ever had. That's good to hear, partner. I look forward to watching you reach your dreams. Amik, what happened to the glasses? Ashina sat in her chair resting her hand on her belly happily. She couldn't wait for her little maelstrom to be born. Leaning against her chair was Shinjetsu, the sentient sword currently asleep until Kishina needed him. In front of her was her best friend Hitomi Hayuga, who was drinking some tea. You know Kushi-chan, me and Hiyashi learned what our child's gender will be today. Kishina smiled at her friend. Oh. It's a girl isn't it? Hitomi giggled as she said. Yep, I've even decided on her name, even though Hiyashi doesn't know yet. She's going to be named Hinata because she's already bringing so much light to my life. I bet my little Naruto-kun and Hinata will be inseparable growing up. Oh wouldn't it be amazing if the two ended up getting married. Before Hitomi could answer an irritated and sleepy sounding metallic voice sounded erg can you keep it down you damn tomato headed tomboy. I'm trying to sleep here. Let it be noted that not only is grumpy when woken up. But he also lacks tact and survival instincts. Filling intent flooded the room as Kashina's hair turned into nine waving tails. Oh I'm a tomato headed tomboy am I? Um, I said that out loud didn't I? Oh yes you did Shinjetsu. But don't worry, you won't have to deal with our discussion much longer. Shinjetsu actually gulped, he might be a sword, but that doesn't mean he can't feel pain. A couple hours later, Minato had entered the kitchen to get something to drink. He opened the cabinet to grab a glass. Only to freeze when he saw what was in the cabinet. Inside the cabinet were no glasses, instead there was a katana and its sheath. The sheath was purple with red polka dots. While the katana had a pink blade with a rainbow hilt and tsuba. It took a moment for Minato to recognize the blade. Shinjetsu, how the hell did you get in the cabinet, not to mention why are you pink? My insane wielder did this to Minato. She woke me up from my nap by being loud and then punished me for snapping. She puts a seal on the cabinet and makes the sound of nails on a chalkboard constantly playing while the cabinet is closed. Please Minato, save me. Suddenly a shadow appeared behind Minato as a sickly sweet voice sounded. 
Oh Minato-kun, you wouldn't be thinking of helping Shinjetsu escape from his punishment would you? No of course not sweetie, I was just curious why he was there. Minato, you cowardly traitor. Now Minato, why don't we go have some fun? With those words Kashina closed the cabinet and dragged Minato away from it. The screams of the poor katana sounding even through the silencing seals in the cabinet. An hour later, at the Hyuga compound. The Ashi walked into his office after lunch to continue working on his paperwork. But when he entered the room he stopped. His desk was covered in various types of drinking glasses. Where did these all come from? The glasses would later be returned to the Yuzumaki compound. While Shinjetsu spent an entire week pink, much to the sentient blade's horror. Chapter 3, The Invasion of Konoha. It was the day of the finals, and Naruto was currently sitting in the stands. By his side was Hinata. Hinata still had her hit I ate on her forehead to hide the fact the seal had been removed. Currently Hinata was smiling happily with what had happened in the past two weeks. That day, when everything had become bleak was easily the best day she had ever had. Sure it had started out dark and she nearly lost all hope. But now she was happily dating Naruto, it was a dream come true. After the Raymond trip they had gotten to know each other better and went on two more dates before Naruto made it official and asked her to be his girlfriend. Something that she had immediately said yes before promptly passing out. When she woke up in her bed at Kurenai sensei's apartment she had thought it was a dream. Till her surrogate mother figure decided to tease her about it. Naruto was sitting in his seat. Resting against his chair was Shinjetsu, who was currently in dreamland. He didn't know why, but he had a bad feeling about today. Thus he had made sure to stock up on supplies. In front of them were the rest of the genin and the sensei. Except for Sakura who had been removed from the shinobi program for both her injury and mental issues. Sasuke who kept glaring at Naruto was on probation, only thanks to the two elders Hamura and Kaharu. In the arena, all twelve contestants stood. In front of them was a young man with pale skin and bags under his eyes. His name was Hei Jeko, and the referee for the exam finals. He didn't see the meeting between Kabuto and Baki in this story, so he's still alive. After a few minutes, the Hokage stood up in his box and stepped forward before his voice sounded through the Colosseum. Ladies, gentlemen, shinobi. Did I miss anyone? A laugh went through the crowd as he continued speaking. Welcome to the Chunin exam finals. Today we have 12 talented genin who are hoping to earn their promotion. I'm certain they will show us they are worthy of being promoted. Now let the Chunin exam finals begin. Hei quickly explained the rules, coughing every minute or so. After he had explained to them, he said, Now would everyone except for Zaku Abumi and Tamari Sabaku please head up to the contestant box. Soon the only three left in the arena were the two combatants and Haid. Zaku smirked as he kept his hands in his pockets, assuming it would be an easy win. Tamari returned the smirk as she pulled the large iron object off her back. Haid looked at the two. Are you both ready? Zaku smirked. Let's get this started, I want to kick Blondie's ass. Tamari nodded. Yes, let's go so I can show this more on his place. Hei nodded as he said. Then begin. Zaku smirked and raised his hands. Decapitating airwaves. With that shout a burst of sound and air flew from his hands. Tamari just smirked and opened the iron object, revealing it to be a large fan. She swung the fan and blew away the air and sound easily. Tamari's smirk grew as she held up her fan. You see this moon here? There are three on this fan and when I reach number three, you lose. You cocky bitch. He raised his hands again. Decapitating airwaves he quickly fired off three more waves in quick succession. All of which Tamari blocked with ease. Take this you damn blonde slut. He braced himself as he shouted out. Extreme decapitating airwaves. He released a burst of air and sound, so powerful it looked like a massive wall. Tamari flipped her fan open completely as she gave it a swing. Sickle weasel technique a huge gust of wind countered the wave of sound and air before destroying it and hitting Zaku engulfing him in a tornado of bladed wind. After a couple minutes, Zaku fell to the ground with a scream of pain. But Jenin. Tiba flinched seeing that. Ow, poor guy. Chikamaru sighed as he muttered. And people wonder why I call blondes troublesome. Both Naruto and Ino heard that. Hey. Damari shook her head. Not even a challenge. Hey quickly checked Zaku's pulse before saying. The winner by knockout, Tamari Sabaku. The audience cheered as Tamari closed her fan and walked up to the contestant box. Hey then said. Will Kintsuchi and Kabuto Yakushi please enter the arena? Kabuto grinned as he walked into the arena. Arachimaru wanted him to hold back a bit but still show off some of his skill to buy time for the troops to get in place. They had to change the plan since he was part of the finals. He couldn't exactly steal a uniform while in the finals. So once the signal was given, he would release them from the contestant box. Soon he stood in front of Kin who was looking slightly uncomfortable. The smirk he was giving wasn't exactly giving her good vibes. 
she was slightly regretting joining her team and hitting him before the first test. A8 looked at the two. Are both combatants ready? After they both confirmed it he raised his hand with a cough before saying. Then let the battle begin. Babuto grinned as he said. You know, I'm almost certain that this is going to be my year. He went through hand signs. Chakra scalpel. His hands began to glow blue with chakra after using them. The reason is because I've finally gotten good enough to use these in battle. In pulled out her needles. If she was going to fight, she was at least going to make it a good one. She began to toss the needles at him. But he did the exact opposite of what she thought he would do. Instead of dodging, he cut through each of the needles. She cursed as she was forced to jump back to dodge a slash at her stomach. This was the worst possible matchup for her. All she had was her and, and she couldn't even use them against him. Babuto grinned. You're quite the one-trick pony, huh? From what I've managed to gather, you're a specialist. Most likely there is poison on those. The bells are most likely for a sound based. Their face became pale. How did you manage to figure that out? Babuto's grin turned sinister for a second before settling on a cocky smirk, way too fast for it to be noticed. Well I may be a medic nin, I am also quite skilled in gathering information. It's never a good idea to be too specialized. With those words he ducks under another batch of before racing forward and placing his hand close to her neck. Surrender or I cut your throat. In looked down and gulped. I surrender. A8 raised his hand as he said. Winner by surrender, Kabuto Yakushi. In the stands. Izumo Kamizuki, one of the eternal gate guards of Konoha, spoke up as he watched the match. Kabuto has a point. That's also the mints that I need. The Tetsu Hage nodded as he spoke. Yeah, the guy definitely has the mincet, not to mention he's quite skilled with those chakra scalpels. He's got my vote. But the genin. Tiba whistled. Wow Kabuto's good. I've never seen someone use those chakra scalpels in battle. My sister only ever uses it in surgery for us. Shikamara nodded as he said. It's also obvious he's good at collecting information if he was able to figure out her entire fighting style from just a couple clashes. He shook his head as he sighed. That level of information gathering is troublesome. Suddenly Shinjetsu spoke up from his spot beside Naruto's seat. For once being serious. He has a weird vibe, almost as if he's hiding behind a mask. Shikamara nodded. Yes I could see that too. He froze as they all turned towards where the voice came from. Naruto was that you? No, that was me. Nice to meet you all, I'm Shinjetsu, Naruto's sword. Tiba was the one who spoke up first, and the most eloquent way possible. At least the most eloquent way for an Inuzuka. Holy shit, your sword just talked. Shinjetsu spoke up, his metallic voice sounding smug as he did. Don't let the novelty wear off for ya, kid, I'm just awesome like that. Sasuke's eyes narrowed as he said. How can the dobe have a sword like you? You should be used by an elite member of the Achiha clan, like me. Shinjetsu scoffed as he said. An elite Achiha. Where exactly? I don't see either Madara or Izuna. I don't see Kagami or even Makoto for that matter. Kid, you're nowhere near an elite member of the Achiha clan. How dare you? Shinjetsu continued as if Sasuke wasn't important. Not to mention, if you were to even touch me, your chakra network would be drained to the point you would never be able to produce chakra again, and you would be crippled for life. Only my chosen wielder may wielder me, and I only ever choose Uzumaki clan members. Ino frowned. What do you mean by the Uzumaki clan? There wasn't isn't an Uzumaki clan. Shinjetsu scoffed as he said. There was an Uzumaki clan, and Naruto is the last known survivor. Now if you're all done with making stupid comments that make me question your sanity, I'm done with this conversation. The other genin began to question Naruto. He just frowned as his face was shadowed by his hat. But he ignored the questions being fired at him. Instead he focused on the arena where the third match was about to begin. A8 spoke up as the two combatants left the arena. Will Kankuro Sabaku and Niji Hayuga please enter the arena? Before anything could happen, Kankuro spoke from the contestant box. Proctor, I forfeit. He didn't care if it seemed cowardly, he couldn't afford to reveal Crow's mechanisms yet. A8 nodded. Okay, winner by forfeit, Niji Hayuga. Will Miss Yumi Tsurugi and Rock Lee please come down to the arena? With Jenin. Naruto flinched as he said. Ow, I feel bad for Misumi since he drew bushy brows. Doji munched on his chips as he said. You train with Lee and Tejutsu, right? Naruto nodded. Yeah, bushy brows is scarily good at Tejutsu. It's not just talent, he works hard and honestly, I would rather fight Niji than bushy brows. Inada looked at Naruto in confusion. She hadn't seen any of Naruto's training sessions with Team 9. Why is that Naruto-kun? Because, in all of their spars. Bushy brows has never fought Niji seriously. He doesn't want to cripple Niji. Niji, despite what he believes, is much weaker than Bushy Brows. Ino frowned. But Niji is last year's Rookie of the Year, while Rock Lee is the dead last. 
Shinjetsu spoke up. Ha, those academy rankings mean nothing. I can point out at least two examples where the so called rookie of the year ends up much weaker than the dead last. Hiba actually looked interested. Well, don't keep us waiting, tell us already. The first that comes to mind is Jureya and Arachimaru. It's a confirmed fact that Jureya, the dead last of his class, is the strongest of the three. Another example of this would be Minato Namika's, the dead last of his class, who became many times stronger than the rookie of the year of her class, Fugaku Uchiha. Fugaku would end up being surpassed by two classmates. Fugaku ended up at the best level. Well, his two classmates, the dead last, Minato Namika's, as well as Naruto's mother, Kashina Yuzumaki, who was in the middle of the pack, both ended up easily cage level. Both were considered for the position of fourth Hokage. Sasuke sneered. How dare you say that about my father? Shinjetsu scoffed. It's the truth, Brad. Just ask your former sensei. He was rookie of the year, his arrogance nearly became his undoing. Hell, the only rookie of the year that I can think of that actually deserved the title was Itachi Uchiha. Of course seeing as he was one of the rare not arrogant Uchiha, it's not that surprising. No wonder he went insane and killed his clan. Sasuke snarled as he was about to grab the sword when Asuma grabbed him. Don't you dare Jenin, you're already on probation. You continue and you'll be removed from the shinobi program before you can say ninjutsu. He then looked at Shinjetsu. Please try to keep from setting off the Uchiha, Shinjetsu. Fine, I'll stop antagonizing the Uchiha. For those who think I'm unjustly bashing Sasuke. There is a reason for this, not to mention, I don't exactly like him for most of the series. I mean he's fine as an adult, heck he's actually cool then. But the rest of time, he was nothing more than a goddamn emo. I dare you all to argue. In the arena. Hey, eight looked at the two genin as he said. Are you both ready? Isumi nodded as he said. Yes. Rock Lee shouted out. Yosh, it's time to show how brightly my flames of youth are burning. If I fail then I will run 20 laps around the village with my hands. Hey, eight sweat dropped before he said. Let the fight begin. This fight proved to be the shortest yet. As before, Miss Yumi could even get close. Rock Lee had appeared in front of him and kicked him into the wall. Hey, eight sweat drop grew. Seriously guy, what have you been teaching this kid? He raised his arm as he said. Winner by knockout Rock Lee. After Rock Lee ran back up to the contestant box and Miss Yumi was taken away by medics, Hate spoke up. Will Dosu Kinta and Gara Sabuku enter the arena please? Gara appeared in the ring in a swirl of sand. Dosu soon followed him down, using the corridor instead. Once they were facing each other Hate said. Are both combatants ready? Dosu nodded, while Gara said in a monotone voice. Mother wishes for his blood. Hey eight frowned upon hearing that. It had become known that the kid was a Jinchuruki like Naruto. But unlike Naruto, he was extremely unstable. Let the match begin. Sand Coffin Sand rushed out of Gara's gourd and quickly engulfed Osu before he could react. He lifted his arm and clenched his fist. Sand burial with a loud and disgusting sound, the sand rushed inward and crushed Osu to death. Blood and parts of his body rushed out of the sand and landed on the ground. The sand then rushed back into his gourd. Hey eight looked at what had happened, trying to keep a straight face. It was unusual to see a genin that was so bloodthirsty. The winner by death, Gara Sabaku. It was then that there was an explosion in the cage box, and feathers began to fall. This was the signal that the invasion had begun. But the genin. The moment the Jinjutsu began Naruto released a pulse of chakra. Because of it, those close to him were freed from the Jinjutsu as well. As soon as he broke it he stood up and grabbed Shinjutsu. As he did this several sand and sound shinobi attacked the group but were put down by the. As Asuma cut down a shinobi he shouted out to the genin. Look alive kids, we're being invaded. Before they could give any orders though, the sand siblings were seen jumping from the contestant box and quickly leaving the stadium. Kurinai gave the genin orders. Naruto, I want you to make a ton of clones to help with evacuation. Then I want you to take a team and chase after those three. Currently you're the best chance we have of stopping Gara. Naruto nodded as he looked at the genin. Shikamaru, Shino, Hinata, with me. The three nodded and followed Naruto as they quickly raced through the stadium. Once they were outside Naruto created a couple hundred clones before sending them off to aid in evacuations. Moment the clones rushed off the group raced towards the trees and hopped into them to give chase to San's siblings, unaware that they had a follower. But the Hokage. Hiruzen frowned as he looked at the form of his fallen student. I had so many hopes for you, Arachimaru. It seems this time I will actually have to do my duty and end you. Arachimaru chuckled. Oh do you really think you are able to sensei? You have become rusty from your time as Hokage. Age has caught up to you. Hiruzen frowned as he said. That may be true. But you gave me enough of a hint to allow me to shake off the rust. The moment you attacked young Sasuke and Sakura, I knew you would try to attack Konoha. I know you too well, Arachimaru. 
although I will say that I was surprised that you got Suna to join the invasion. Arachimara nodded before saying in a sarcastic tone. Well thank you for that sensei. I do live to impress. His tone turned more sinister as a grin split his face. Of course, by the end of today, Kanoha will be destroyed. That boy Gara will make certain of it. Once he releases Shukaku, the Biju will destroy the village. Pirazin shook his head. The will of fire will win. Shukaku will be stopped. But most of all, you won't leave here alive. He threw off his robes to reveal his battle armor as he said. As I said, I was expecting you to attack for the past month. Jiraiya had gotten information that you were in charge of sound. So I've been preparing. So, shall we begin our battle of life and death, my fallen student? Of clone group 1. The first clone group of 40 headed towards the hospital. Their goal was to help the doctors and shinobi secure the premise. As they got close, one of the clone swords spoke huh, it's been ages since I've been cloned. All the clones looked at the katana that had just spoken up. The one who was its wielder was doing his best impression of a fish. So one of the others asked the question. Shinjetsu, what's going on? The sentient sword's voice sounded from the blade held by the one who asked. Ah, well you know how shadow clones copy the equipment of the user. Yeah, I'm in contact with each of my copies. They might not have the same abilities as me, being nothing more than simple swords. But I can sense what happens around them, same as with my main body. A third Naruto spoke up this time. You're talking through different swords just messing with us, aren't you? Odd I will neither confirm or deny said accusation. Sadly Shinjetsu's answer wasn't quite effective, seeing as he spoke from yet another sword. The leader of the group. Who had finally recovered from his shock spoke up. All in favor of treating the talking sword like he doesn't exist, says I. Every clone said I. The A's have it, motion passed, Shinjetsu no longer exists. Now let's get back to work. With those words the group charged off, ignoring the words of Shinjetsu. Clone Group 2. The second group which had 60 clones, quickly arrived at their destination, the academy only to find it under siege by sound shinobi. Those that taught classes there were trying their hardest to protect a small red barrier that contained the students. The teachers were being pushed back and would soon be overwhelmed by the 40 shinobi currently attacking them. The leader turned to his group. Okay guys, take them by surprise, or shock and awe. All of them voted for shock and awe. Less than a minute later the shinobi heard a loud voice shout out. Charge. Before a tidal wave of blondes collided with their forces. The shock of a bunch of blondes randomly appearing caused chaos in the 40 sound shinobi. The few that were left used this as a rallying point and attacked the enemy shinobi. Within 10 minutes the shinobi had been killed. But only 10 Naruto clones and 3 of them were still alive. Naruka, who was one of the survivors, stepped forward. I guess I owe Naruto some Raymond for sending reinforcements. The leader of the clones scratched the back of his head sheepishly. The boss would probably enjoy that. Do you need help escorting the students to the shelter? Aruka nodded. If you don't mind. We really could use the help. But the nod the leader of the clones turned to his brother and began to give orders. When suddenly the ground shook and in the woods rose a huge being of sand. Less than a minute later, a giant plume of smoke rose and with a loud roar was blown away, revealing something that hadn't entered the shinobi world in years. Original Naruto's team. The group was quickly jumping through the trees at high speed. Trying their best to catch up to the sand siblings. The group had already decided on jobs for each member. Shikamaru and Hinata would take on Tamari, while Shino would face Kankuro. Naruto on the other hand would face Gara. Hinata spoke up. We are getting close. They have stopped, but Gara is doing something weird. He's becoming surrounded by a sphere of sand. He also seems to be chanting. Suddenly Kurama's voice sounded in Naruto's head. It was heavily muffled, but the ancient fox's voice was still clear. Naruto, you need to hurry. That's how a Jinchuruki for Shukaku releases him. Are you serious? Fuck. Naruto sped up as he said. We need to hurry. I have a really bad feeling. They entered the clearing just in time to see the sand orb finish covering Gara and the chanting to grow louder as an eye of sand formed outside of it. Naruto frowned as he drew Shinjetsu. Stick to the plan everyone. Everyone acknowledged his orders and they charged at their opponents. Kankuro fled into the trees trying to get away from Shino so he could deploy his puppet in safety. Tamari jumped back as Shikamaru and Hinata charged her. Shikamaru stayed back to provide support while Hinata took the place of the vanguard. Both groups disappeared into the forest, leaving Naruto and Gara alone in the clearing. Most likely the siblings assumed that no one could break through the sphere's defenses. Shino's fight is same as canon. But Hinata and Shikamaru. They soon reached a new clearing. As they did Hinata rushed forward, her hands glowing with chakra as she threw a palm strike at Tamari, who was forced to block it with her closed fan, before jumping back to dodge a couple kunai thrown by Shikamaru. She frowned as she thought. 
So the Hyuga girl is the vanguard, striking at me to keep me on guard. I'm guessing Pineapple Head is the support. I need to figure out what exactly the Pineapple Head can do. Because right now he could be the more dangerous one. The Mari opened up her fan and released a gust of wind. Shikamaru took cover behind a tree while Hinata was hit and with a poof of smoke turned into a log. Tamari turned on instinct to see Hinata charging at her. Forcing her to keep on the retreat and not be able to get far enough away. Out of the corner of her eye she saw Shikamaru using hand signs making her frown. That is till she saw the symbol on his sleeve. Fuck, he's Inara. He's probably come up with a plan to defeat me and is telling the Hayuga through those hand signs. Hinata gave a nod towards Shikamaru as she did something Tamari wasn't expecting. She dropped onto her hand and spun, her feet engulfed in chakra kicking a Tamari and managing to connect with her side. Tamari was sent back into a tree, losing a hold of her fan. As she got back to her feet she suddenly froze. What the hell? Shadow possession technique, complete. Tamari frowned. Damn it, how did I get caught so easily? Chikamaru smiled as he made her turn her head to look at him as he said. As you probably noticed, I signaled to Hinata while she was fighting you. The whole plan hinged on her sending you into that tree to make it easier for me to trap you. But you really shouldn't be focusing on me. Suddenly Hinata's voice sounded behind her. 8 trigrams 32 palms. With those words Shikamaru dropped the shadow possession, just as Hinata unleashed a painful barrage on Tamari. Tamari fell to the ground unable to move. Damn it, if I had known you were Inara earlier, I would have targeted you first. Troublesome, that was why I hanged back. Many shinobi outside of Kanoha Noda always go for the Nara first, since we are natural strategists. Before they could continue speaking through, the ground began to shake as a massive being of sand rose from the ground. Before anyone could speak, a giant plume of smoke that represented a summoned beast appeared. With a roar and a burst of air, the being that had been summoned blew away the smoke to reveal itself. Tamari and Shikamaru were speechless at the beast. But Hinata just smiled, she knew that Naruto would win now. Because he now had a powerful ally on his side. Tamari on the other hand became worried and tried to get up. No, Gara, please be okay. She watched helplessly as the fight raged on before she had regained enough movement to be able to try and get to her brother. But Naruto and Gara a few minutes earlier. Naruto resheathed Shinjutsu and took a stance as he calmed his breathing and focused on the orb that wasn't moving. Suddenly he rushed forward with his hand on his sword ready to draw it. When he got close enough to the orb he drew the blade quickly enough that all that was seen was a silver and black blur. Starlight. His blade cut into the orb, the chakra being streamed through the blade, making it vibrate at high speeds and cut through the sand. As the blade cut through the air, it left a trail of light. The blade began to cut through the orb, being slowed by the sand. But the high-speed vibration of the blade began to cut through, as it did, Shinjetsu began to drink the chakra that was in the sand, severing the control over the sand. Soon he had managed to fully cut through, causing a scream of pain to sound from the sphere, before it fell to reveal the changed form of Gara. It was obvious that Naruto's strike had interrupted Gara's transformation. The unstable Jinchuruki was holding his right shoulder which was bloody as he snarled at Naruto. His body now looked like it had been coated in sand and looked like a tanuki made of sand. Naruto took his stance, his knees bent, his sword held in a one-handed grip at his side, ready to be swung. This was the basic stance for his kenjutsu style he had begun learning from Shinjutsu, Celestial Knight. It allowed Naruto to switch between sword attacks and the kicks that his tajutsu style used. He then decided to use one of the oldest tactics in the Uzumaki clan repertoire. Insulting your enemy to make them lose control. I got to say Gara, I didn't know you were a furry. So you get off dressing up as animals. Hey I'm not one to judge. Gara narrowed his eyes as sand quickly covered and closed his wound. He then said in a demonic voice. Mother will have your blood Uzumaki. Oh so you're into blood play as well. Well sorry I'm not into that. But if you want we can start on some good old fashioned bondage. Gara snarled and launched a brace of sand shuriken at him, which Naruto dodged with ease. I guess that's a no-ha. Huh? Naruto prepared himself for what would likely be the hardest fight he had been in so far. He dodged around various sand shuriken and rushed forward. Shinjetsu began to glow silver, forming an aura around him as he thrust him forward like a spear with one hand. Meteor. In response Gara's sand rose up to block the strike. But it was still getting through so he was forced to put more and more sand into it. When suddenly Naruto spun slightly, his arm still thrusting the sword forward, and his leg managed to slip by Gara's defense and wrap around the back of his neck. Reception. With a grunt he forcefully slammed Gara into the branch before leaping back. When he landed he took stock of what just happened. As I thought, he doesn't have as much sand for defense right now. Most of it is coating his body. Likely he can make more, but if I'm keeping him focused on me, it will probably take longer. 
R roared as he climbed back to his feet and charged at Naruto like a rabid beast, swinging his claws at him. Naruto was forced on the retreat, parrying with Shinjutsu as he did. Each clash caused Gara to lose some of his sand claws, which was quickly restored by the spare sand he had. Naruto flipped back and landed on his free hand as he spun on it, sending multiple kicks at Gara, each kick being blocked by the sand. Naruto just channeled Chakra to his palm, making it so there was very little friction while he used the sand to pivot the other way and was slowly building up speed and strength. Soon he was spinning fast enough that the sand was having a hard time keeping up with him. Mixer. Mixer, finally one of the kicks managed to sneak past the sand and strike Gara hard in the chest, sending him flying. Naruto flipped off his hand and landed on the branch, making five shadow clones. Together the clones and him charged Gara. The unstable man stood up and had managed to calm down enough to actually think out his moves. His right claw swung out, releasing a blade of sand that cut through two of the clones and made them disappear. His left claw then extended and took out another before the two clones and original reached him. The two clones' blades clashed against the claws, unable to cut through as the swords were just normal blades. Well the original slid under the branch using tree walking and quickly got behind him, pulling out a kunai with an exploding tag wrapped around the handle. Here Gara, I got you a present. 1000 years of death. But those words he thrust the kunai into the base of Gara's tail and jumped away, just as the tag exploded. Naruto landed on the trunk of a tree as he tried to look through the smoke. Suddenly Shinjetsu spoke up. Did you just? Naruto nodded. With a? Of course Shinjetsu. Naruto, you are a very weird person. Soon the smoke cleared to reveal Gara, but his body was misshapen, showing that the explosion had done lots of damage. I won't let you win Yuzumaki. Mother will have your blood. But that shout there was a burst of chakra so powerful that it threw Naruto back. He crashed into the trunk of a tree and had to catch his breath thanks to having the air knocked out of his lungs. Suddenly a shadow covered him. When he looked up his eyes went wide as he cursed. Standing above him was a massive tanuki made of sand with various black markings on its body that almost looked like lettering. Seeing the tanuki, Naruto began to gather as much chakra as he could before biting his thumb and slamming his hand down on the trunk as he shouted. Summoning Jutsu. With a plume of smoke and a roar, the Yuzumaki clan dragon summons announced their return to the shinobi world. If so wish, you can play porno graffiti. The day also known as My Hero Academia opening song 1 because this is literally the song that started playing in my playlist when I was writing this part. The cloud was blown away to reveal a massive dragon. The dragon was pitch black with an almost skeletal frame. Its eyes were blood red and its bat-like wings were extended to its full size. Its black claws gleamed like black steel. On its head was Naruto who was happy that the summoning worked. That's when it spoke in a scratchy male voice. So you're our newest summoner. It's nice to meet you. I am Gazoa, the Dark Inferno Dragon. One of the greatest dragons you'll ever have the pleasure of meeting. The dragon studied the tanuki in front of him before he let out a sound that could only be a chuckle. Ah you summoned me to fight. That's great, I was looking for a good throw down. Before Naruto could say anything Gara appeared on top of Shukaku's head as he made a hand sign. Play possum jutsu. With those words Gara fell asleep and Shukaku's eyes brightened. Ahaha, I'm finally free, baby. Oh and look at some people I can murder. With those words Shukaku sucked in air and released several air bullets at Gazoa. Wine style. Air bullet. The dragon returned fire with several balls of orange fire that were streaked with black. Fire style. Dark fire bullets. The balls of fire clashed with the air bullets and consumed them. Is that the best you got you, overgrown plush toy? Azo raised his right claw which became engulfed in black and orange flames. Dark flame reaver. With this declaration he swung her claw, releasing an arc of flames at Shukaku. Who protected himself with sand. When the flames met the sand, the sand became black glass, blocking Shukaku's view. Once the sand was turned to glass the dragon swung one of his claws at it, shattering it. With a maniacal laugh a massive tidal wave of sand came rushing at Gazoa, who released a stream of fire to combat the sand in response. The sand and fire clashed and the sand warped into glass. But the dragon wasn't able to hold back the sand forever. Gazoa was forced to take to the air as the sand overwhelmed his position. Man, I'm lucky that he isn't in a desert, otherwise this would be impossible. Naruto, I'm going to try and hold Shukaku in place, when I do, you need to jump over to his head and wake up the brat. He dove down, using the sun behind him to make it difficult for Shukaku to look directly at him. As he dove he released a barrage of black and orange flame blades from his claws, forcing Shukaku to protect himself with sand. Soon engulfing the tanuki in a covering of glass. He smashed through the glass and Shukaku was forced to block the attack with his arms. Gazoa closed his claws around each arm and leaned forward, blasting flames in Shukaku's face, making sure to angle his mouth so he didn't hit Gara before saying. 
Now Naruto, do it. Naruto leapt off Gazoa's head and onto the now glass head of Shukaku. He ran along the one-tailed Bijuu's head until he got to Gara. To make certain Gara woke up, Naruto used the strongest kick he knew. It's bad manners to sleep on the battlefield Gara. Conkass. Crush, he flipped into the air and spun through it several times before bringing his foot down hard on Gara's head. As he did Gara woke up and Shukaku, who was shouting about being forced back in, began to crumble. The two of them fell to the ground as Gazua disappeared as well, his time was up. Naruto and Gara both landed on branches and glared at each other. Gara was on his last legs. While Naruto was tired, he wasn't close to passing out like Gara. Training with Bushy Brows and Mega Brows Sensei had definitely done wonders. Gara leapt at Naruto, trying to kill him with his bare hands. Brichette. Skewer, Naruto leapt into the air and flipped over Gara's head before aiming his leg downward and began to spin like a drill. With a burst of chakra Naruto was sent downward and his Gara in the back, knocking the two of them into the ground. When they impacted on the ground Naruto flipped backwards and landed as he panted. As he looked at Gara, he frowned as he could see himself in Gara. He began to walk forward as he did Gara tried to throw sand at him. You won't erase my existence. Stay back, don't come closer. It's almost unbearable, isn't it? The feeling of being all alone. Gara froze when he heard that and for some reason he listened to Naruto. I know that feeling because I'm just like you, a Jinchuruki. Gara spoke up. Why? Why would you sacrifice so much for them? Naruto shook his head. I don't do it for the people who look down on me. I do it for the people who saw me for me. Hokage Jiji, Iruka sensei Kirby Sage, Hinata-chan. They all saw me as Naruto Uzumaki. Not as A, but a person. Those are people who I want to protect and who want to protect me in return. They're the reason why I fight they are my strength and I will never turn my back on them. I see. You protect them. Because you love them. But. I don't have anyone like that. Naruto frowned. But what about your siblings? Naruto pointed behind Gara where Tamari and Kankura were walking forward, both limping but defensive. Tamari had her fan out and was glaring at Naruto. It wasn't quite as effective as it would normally have been with her with how ragged she looked. It was obvious she had only barely managed to get away from Hinata and Shikamaru, most likely with a lot of chakra points sealed. I won't let you hurt my little brother anymore. Gara spoke up. Tamari, Kankuro, enough, let's just go home. The two siblings nodded and helped Gara get up as they left Gara spoke once more. Tamari, Kankuro, I'm sorry for everything. The two were shocked, but it was Kankuro who answered. It's fine Gara. we're just happy to have our little brother back. After they left, Naruto started to head back to the village. Even though he was tired, he needed to get back. As he walked he stumbled when his foot hit a small hole. But before he could fall a blue and cream colored blur shot out and steadied him. I got you Naruto-kun Hinata smiled at him as she said. Naruto-kun you did it. He smiled as he stroked Hinata's hair before pulling away slightly. Yeah, but I'm also tired and sore. Mind helping me get back to the village Hinata-chan? I don't want to fall on my face, Hinata nodded with a smile as they both moved back towards the village. Little did Naruto know, sadly not every battle of the invasion would turn out okay. Today he would lose someone extremely important to him. Amic. What if Arachimaru managed to revive Minato? Arachimaru smirked as he looked at the three coffins. It's over sensei, with these three, I will kill you, and then the village will fall. The coffin lids fell to the ground, revealing the first, second, and fourth Hokage. They stepped out of the coffins and opened their eyes, looking around as they did. Ashirama looked at Hiruzen as he said. Hiruzen, is that you? Abarama shook his head. You've definitely gotten old. Age really wasn't kind to you. Banado looked at Hiruzen as he asked the question that was most important to him. How is Naruto doing old monkey? Hiruzen couldn't help but grin, he had missed hearing that nickname. But before he could answer Tabarama spoke up. I never thought I would be revived on my own. Ashirama glared at his brother as he said. I told you that you shouldn't have made this. But did you listen to me, no. Why should you listen to your older brother? Abarama snorted. Maybe it's because my older brother is a meathead who has to have his wife do all his thinking for him. Arachimaru watched the bickering, quite enjoying it. He was certain of his victory. That was until Minato began to glow slightly and moved. Minato slammed his palm into the Senju brothers' chests, knocking them back slightly, but a seal pattern spread on their bodies, and they regained mobility. It also had the side effect of stopping the argument between the brothers. Ashirama grinned. Oh, I'm free to move on my own again, neat. His goofiness instantly broke those who were watching out of their delusions. Arachimaru's eyes went wide as he said. How can you move Minato? I summoned you, I control you. Minato grinned at Arachimaru. You really didn't do your research, did you snake team? I died using the Reaper Death Seal, that means my soul is property of the Shinigami. Which means I can't be controlled by anyone else. 
it was even easier to free those two. All I needed was a contract breaking seal and well, Yur is now working against you. He turned to the two Senju brothers. So one of you two can take care of him. I'm going to go help out the other shinobi and then go see my son. With those words Minato vanished in a flash of yellow light. Hashirama and Tabarama looked at each other before both playing Junkin, with Tabarama winning. Hashirama pouted at his loss. No fair, I wanted to beat up the pale-looking pedophile. Apparently even those who have been dead for over 40 years thought Arachimaru was a pedophile. Tabarama looked at Arachimaru, cracking his knuckles as he said. Tough brother, now go help out the Kanoha shinobi. I'm going to teach this snake why you should respect the dead. Here is in just watch the scene as he made a chair with earth chakra, unsealing popcorn from a seal on his armor. This would be good. That day, the screams of agony from Arachimaru sounded loud enough for all those in the village to hear. Chapter 4, Enter the Akatsuki. It had been two weeks since the invasion. Two weeks had passed since the man who Naruto saw as his grandfather had died facing his traitorous student. During the funeral Naruto had stood beside Jiraiya and Hinata. He had done his best not to break down at the funeral. Even the heavens cried at the death of the professor. Naruto currently was in the training ground practicing his tojutsu, trying to keep his mind off the dark thoughts going through his mind. He was currently trying to use his newest technique in the black leg style. The scroll has revealed the new part a couple days ago. A part labeled Diabol Jam, Devil Leg. He slowly coated his right leg in neutral chakra. He then began to spin, trying to ignite the chakra through friction. After about 15 turns he had to stop and fell over, completely dizzy. After a few minutes of recovering from his dizziness, he decided to just rest on the ground watching the sky. Suddenly the sky faded and he found himself in a new place. The place he found himself looked like the garden in his family's house. A place he would spend a lot of his time after it had been fixed up. He had always enjoyed gardening. The garden though had been expanded hundredfold, it was quite a sight. But there was no sky, it was covered by a stone ceiling that was crudely painted to look like a sky. Suddenly Kurama's voice sounded behind him. Do you like the changes you have managed to make to your mindscape? Naruto turned and gasped when he saw Kurama's new cell. It took the form of a Shinto temple with a gate in front of it. The seal was still what held the gate closed. The ancient fox gave Naruto a fang-filled grin as he said. You know, that time you've spent with your mate has really helped this place. I think in another month or two, it will be truly beautiful, but it's still developing. Why did you call me Kurama here? I just wanted to show you the changes you were causing in your mindscape. I approve of your new mints at Naruto. You're also becoming stronger, that is very good. Naruto sheepishly rubbed the back of his head. Thanks to Kurama, it helps to have a decent teacher. On the topic of a good teacher. Some advice for your new technique. Channel chakra into your ears as you spin. Well normally that is used to increase your sense of hearing, it also keeps the inner ear from being disturbed. It will be easier to get used to spinning that way. Really? Thanks for the advice, Kurama. Now it's time for you to go, I can sense your mate is approaching. Before Naruto could say anything the mindscape went black. He awoke just in time to hear a set of footsteps walking towards him. He looked up to see Hinata coming up to him. Are you okay Naruto-kun? He nodded, still lying on his back. Yeah, I've been working on the next stage of my tojutsu training. But entering the next stage is kinda tough. I need to coat my leg in chakra before spinning fast enough to ignite the chakra without getting dizzy. It will make my kicks more powerful. Anata nodded before she said with worry still apparent in her voice. That's not what I was asking about Naruto-kun. I know Hokage-sama was like a grandfather to you. It must be hard for you that he's now gone. Naruto stared at the sky. It's just so hard to believe he's gone. I mean he was always there for me. He was the first person to care about me. You know, the first time we met he had taken me for Raymond. He shook his head with a grin. You know, I spent much of yesterday talking with Konohimaru. We mostly talked about our memories of Hokage Jiji. Hinata smiled. That sounds nice, Naruto-kun. Naruto quickly jumped to his feet and walked over to one of the training logs, where Shinjetsu was leaning against the log asleep. After strapping the sleeping blade to his hips he stopped for a moment and said. Hey Hinata-chan, would you be up to getting some Raymond with me? Hinata smiled, she was still worried about her boyfriend. But maybe lunch would help. Sure Naruto-kun. That sounds like a good idea. Naruto grinned as he quickly ran up one of the trees. Come on, let's go, Hinata-chan. With those words he jumped away. Naruto-kun, wait up. Hinata quickly followed, smiling as she did. She was happy that the boy she loved was okay. Raymond stand 30 minutes later. Naruto was working on his eighth bowl. In between bites he would talk to Hinata. When suddenly the flaps on the stall moved out of the way and a voice sounded. So it's true what they say, you really only eat Raymond, huh? Naruto turned to see Jiraiya grinning at him. Naruto finished his bite and said. 
Nope, I also can cook as Hinata-chan can attest. Also, what are you doing here, Kirby Sage? Gareya twitched when he heard the nickname but ignored it. Well I got a mission for both of us. Oh, what's the mission, Kirby Sage? Well I'll tell you more after we get on the road. But basically, we need to track someone down. Naruto looked over to Hinata as he said. Then we should take Hinata-chan with us. Her Byakugan could help out a lot. She's an awesome tracker. Gareya froze for a few seconds before he nodded. You have a point, Naruto. She would be a big help. Well, Hinata, how do you feel about going on a mission with me and Naruto? Hinata quickly nodded. She really wanted to go with Naruto and Jiraiya. She could train some more with the Toad Sanin and become stronger. Not to mention she could spend more time with her boyfriend. There really wasn't much of a question. Of course I would be honored to come along with you and Naruto. Jiraiya smiled and said. Meet me at the main gate in half an hour. Be packed for a two-week trip. But that Jiraiya left the stand and Naruto had a grin break out on his face. Woohoo, road trip with Hinata-chan. Let it be known, even after the maturing that had come with his training, Naruto could still act like a child at times. Hinata smiled, she loved it when Naruto was happy. Remember Naruto-kun, it's a mission. It could be dangerous. Naruto couldn't help but smile. I know Hinata-chan, but I'll have you and Pervy Sage there to help me out if I get in trouble. Not to mention, Pervy Sage will probably train us a more while on the road. Hinata nodded. Then let's finish up and get what we need. We only have 30 minutes. Naruto nodded and quickly finished the two bowls of ramen in front of him before putting down the money for both of them. Hinata couldn't help but smile seeing he still had the toad wallet she got him a few years ago. Hinata-chan, I'll meet you at the gate okay? Hinata nodded before he rushed off towards the Uzumaki compound. Main gate, 20 minutes later. Gureya and Hinata were waiting at the main gate. Hinata had managed to convince Kuranite to let her come along. This had led to a very funny scene involving Kuranai threatening Jiraiya's manhood if he tried to corrupt Hinata. Soon Naruto came into view, jumping across the roofs. He had gotten quite skilled at that. He was even doing backflips and cartwheels through the air. As he performed said tricks his scarf would wave through the air behind him and he would hold onto his hat to keep it from flying off. He soon landed in front of them and gave a smile. Jiraiya nodded. Nicely done kid, I give you a 7 out of 10. Hinata giggled, already used to this as she said. I give you eight Naruto-kun. Naruto smiled as Jiraiya spoke. Well you two, let's go. The trio quickly left the village and started to walk down the road. The two genin were excited for what was going to learn from the toad. On the road, an hour later. Jiraiya turned to the two genin as he said. Okay, we are far enough from the village for me to explain a few things. First off, I have been chosen to become the next Hokage. Before I am sworn in we are going to find Tsunade and bring her home. I plan to make a few changes, first of which is a plan she tried to enact in the Second Shinobi War, a medic nin training program. But there is a problem, there is a high chance she won't accept. That's why I wanted to bring Naruto. Naruto spoke up in a confused tone. What do I have to do with anything? Jiraiya sighed. Sanadi was as close to your mother as I was with your father. When she arrived back at the village shortly after the Kaiubi attacked it and learned Kashina was dead, she ended up breaking down. She had already lost two people she loved, then she had lost the closest thing she had ever had to a daughter. It was too much, hopefully seeing you will help pull her out of her funk. I don't think she realized that you were alive, or she would have brought you with her. I'm hoping when she learns you're alive, she will come back to the village to accept her new position as the director of the hospital. For those who are wondering, Tsunade's story will be changed. Hinata spoke up. Do you really think having Naruto come there will help? Gureya nodded. Definitely, I'm certain that meeting Naruto will help reignite Sanadi's will of fire. You see, Sanadi loved Kashina as if she was her own daughter. In fact after her fiancé Dan died, Sanadi was suffering from hemophobia. About seven years later, Kashina had become a genin and was brought back in a very dangerous state from a mission. She was near death. The fear of losing the closest thing to a daughter that she had helped Sanadi push past her fear of blood. She managed to save Kashina's life and was the one who taught Kashina most of the chakra control exercises she had to go through to be able to keep her chakra control at a decent level. Heck I think Sanadi had plans to adopt Kashina, but they decided against it. Suddenly Shinjetsu spoke up. Huh, what was that about Sanadi? Everyone turned to look at the sword on Naruto's waist. Naruto spoke up in confusion. Um hi Shinjetsu, we're talking about recruiting Sanadi to be the new. Why have you been so quiet the past two weeks? Oh sorry, I kinda took a nap. Being a sword can be boring at times. Don't worry, if I'm ever asleep when you get in a fight my abilities will still work. Gureya coughed. Shinjetsu, as nice as it is to see you awake, do you mind if we continue our discussion? Huh, oh right yeah go right ahead. So as I said, our mission is to find Tsunade to come home. 
while we are searching for her, we will be training. I will be teaching Naruto a very special ninjutsu, Hinata as well if Naruto allows it. Naruto looked at him in confusion. Why would you need my permission to teach Hinata a ninjutsu? Gureya grinned as he held out his hand, making a sphere of chakra form in his palm. Because Naruto, this ninjutsu, was made by your father. Naruto and Hinata both froze, recognizing the technique from stories they had heard and pictures they had seen. Naruto spoke in an almost revered whisper. The Rasengan. Gureya nodded as the sphere died down. This technique was your father's original ninjutsu. Done with pure chakra manipulation, no hand signs at all. He only taught it to three people. Me, his student Kakashi, and your mother. Since he's no longer around, I'm going to teach you it. But I must ask again, is it okay for me to teach Hinata as well? Now not much of Kashina's fighting style was ever revealed, other than the fact she was a skilled Fuinjutsu user and could use the Yuzumaki chains. But I feel like Minato would teach his wife how to do the Rasengan. I mean he most likely didn't teach her Horation, but Rasengan, most likely. Naruto nodded, still dumbfounded that he was going to learn a technique his father had developed. Yeah, Hinata can learn the Rasengan. Gureya smiled as Hinata hugged Naruto, happy that he trusted her enough to learn a technique that could be counted as a clan secret. Well that is good to know, at the first village we stop at, I can get the supplies needed to start training you too. Now let's get moving and I will explain about the Rasengan. They began to walk along the road as Jiraiya explained how Naruto's father had developed the Rasengan, he didn't go into depth about how they would train to learn it. But he did talk about how it was developed based on the Bijuu bomb used by Jinchuruki. To be exact, the Bijuu bomb was used by the Eight Tails Jinchuriki of Kumo. Pillar B and A respected and were good friends with Naruto's father after the war. In fact, Minato was the only one who liked Killer B's rapping and enjoyed watching him irritate his brother. As they walked down the road, they were unaware that forces were beginning to move. But soon they would learn just what trouble was coming their way. Hinoha, shortly after the three left. The Kashi was panting on the top of the water, barely having the strength to keep himself afloat. The technique Itachi had just used was horrible. You're not the only ones after Naruto. I know about your organization, Akatsuki. Itachi frowned. Kiss him, leave Kakashi alive, he's coming with us. Kissum grinned as he stepped forward. Sounds good to me. Before he could attack the other two shinobi, he was kicked in the stomach by a man wearing green spandex. Itachi said with a calm tone as he watched Mike Guy. Are you okay Kissum? Kissum groaned as he slowly stood back up. Yeah, but that guy hits like a bull. That's when a calm voice spoke up. He's not the only one you need to worry about Itachi Ichiha and Kissum Hashigaki, as you are both currently surrounded. Slowly walking onto the water was an elderly man with one arm in a sling and one arm covered by bandages. As he walked he held onto a cane, but even though he seemed to be crippled, he had an aura of authority and power. This man was Danzo Shimura, head of the Shimura clan, and one of the most loyal citizens of Konoha. He was also one of the only two confirmed Sharingan receivers, coming from his former best friend Kagami Ichiha. He was Saratobi's closest friend, as well as greatest rival, while the old was alive. For much of their younger years they had been bitter rivals. That is until when Danzo was 25 and on a mission he lost his eye and Kagami died protecting him from an attack. As Kagami was bleeding out, he requested the medic for the group Shuri Uzumaki to transplant his right eye into Danzo's. After the mission was complete Danzo came back to the village close to the point of a mental breakdown. It was Hiruzen who had helped him recover. This led to them becoming close friends. A year later he would lose his right arm and need to have it replaced with a special puppet arm. No longer fit for active duty. He would then become the head of the elite subdivision of Anbu known as Root. Root members were trained to suppress their emotions during battle to keep them centered during missions, since they only took the most dangerous missions. As he walked out onto the water suddenly ten shinobi appeared around Kisum and Itachi. All of them were wearing animal masks with a symbol for Root on the forehead. Itachi Ichiha, it saddens me how far such a talented young shinobi such as yourself has fallen. First you slaughter your own clan, then you return to the village to kidnap Naruto. I'm sorry to tell you, but this will not be happening. Danzo would readily admit he quite liked the young Jinchuruki. The boy had drive and lots of potential. Not to mention having a good outlook on life. He would become a great shinobi one day. Danzo slowly removed the sling from his arm to reveal an artificial puppet arm. Thanks to the multiple seals engraved into it, the arm moved as if it was his natural arm. He then removed the bandage covering his eye to reveal the Sharingan he had been given by Kagami. With that done he pulled a blade out of his cane. The root agents all drew their blades. As they did Danzo spoke up. Mike I, get the injured out of here. Mike I acknowledged the order and quickly grabbed Kakashi before leading Kurinai and Asuma away from the battle. Danzo frowned as he looked at the two missing men. This will be difficult, I need to make sure Itachi can escape believably. 
Itachi spoke up. Sadly Danzo, you won't be able to catch us, as we are just clones, the originals have long since left. The Kissam clone laughed loudly. Yep, the original switched out with us right after Kakashi got his ass handed to him by Itachi. We're long gone now, old man. But those words the two clones dispelled, Kissam's in a burst of water, while Itachi's burst into a cloud of smoke. Danzo sighed as he sheathed his blade and put his puppet arm back into the sling to conserve chakra. A root agent turned to Danzo as she asked. Danzo-sama, should we go after them? Danzo shook his head. No, I doubt we could track them down. Itachi is too skilled at counter-tracking. The root agents knew better than to argue against their superior. As Danzo headed back towards the main part of the village, he couldn't help but think I hope Sasuke does not find out about Itachi being in the village. In the Ichiha compound. Sasuke was looking through the Ichiha clan library for information on Fuinjutsu. He wanted to know how to undo the restraining seal on his neck. During the invasion, Sasuke had gotten a taste of the power the seal Orochimaru put on him granted him. Flashback, during the invasion. Sasuke had been separated from the rest of the genin when they had been assigned the mission of helping to evacuate the civilians. He didn't care though, it just gave him a better chance of copying techniques from any shinobi he saw. Currently, he was backed into a corner as he faced a sand village. He was barely holding his own as he was much quicker than him. Not to mention he didn't use much in the ways of ninjutsu, instead relying on it. It was as he was being backed into a corner that his neck began to burn slightly. When it did, it felt like a large amount of energy had welled up in him, at the same time he was moving so slow. Sasuke revealed a sadistic grin as he rushed at the who was shocked at the black-haired genin's speed. His sword was quickly knocked out of his hand and he was forced to his knees. It was at that point that his arm was ripped out of his socket and his elbow shattered. As he screamed a fist impacted on his jaw hard, shattering it. The man screamed in pain before he felt a lance of pain through his forehead, and everything went black. Sasuke had decided to end his life by stabbing a kunai through his head. Sasuke looked down at himself as the tomo-shaped mark slowly receded. No, stay. I need this power, stop leaving. But his words were all for naught. Soon the power and the markings had been pulled back into the restraining seal. Present day, Ichiha compound. The power the curse mark had granted him, it was amazing, and exactly what he needed. It was what would allow him to kill Itachi. After that he would make the dope pay for betraying him. Then he would make this village suffer for daring to take what was rightfully his. Sasuke's face split into an insane grin, unaware that the curse mark was already influencing his mind. But even if he knew, he wouldn't care. But Tsunade retrieval team, an hour later. The three of them had just stopped at a village that was having a festival. Jiraiya nodded. Perfect, now Naruto, Hinata, I'm going to go get information on Tsunade's location. You two go and enjoy the festival. Naruto grinned as he pulled out his toad wallet which was stuffed full of Ryo bills. All right, let's go have some fun Hinata-chan. Let's make a date out of it. Jiraiya looked at the toad wallet as he said. That's some serious cash right there Naruto. Now so you don't fall into one of the shinobi vices, how about I hold on to it for you. Before he could grab the wallet, Hinata slapped his wallet away and glared at him with a Byakugan enhanced glare. Naruto-kun wants to spend his money on our date, that is his business. Don't try to interfere with our date Jiraiya-sama. Jiraiya backed off. Good lord, she can be as scary as Kashina when she wants to be. He raised his hands in surrender. Okay, okay, just remember Naruto. The three shinobi vices are women, money, and alcohol. In excess, any of those can ruin a great shinobi. He started to walk away. Have fun you two, come find me in three hours. Three hours later. Naruto and Hinata were walking along the street, they had a lot of fun at the festival, but now they needed to find Jiraiya. The two had a great date, and now they were looking for Jiraiya. After a few minutes they heard a laugh come from a stall. It sounded like Jiraiya. The two walked towards the stall and opened the flaps to see Jiraiya completely drunk, with a woman on either side in low-cut kimonos. Naruto fascinated. I can't believe it. Just two hours ago, he warned us about the shinobi vices. Since we left for our date he has indulged in at least two of them, if not all three of them. And not aside. Jiraiya-san, I've lost all respect for you. Jiraiya looked at them in shock and confusion as he shot up. Wait, this isn't what it looks like. Naruto frowned as he said. Oh really, what is it then? Jiraiya quickly began to speak. Working girls tend to have lots of inside knowledge as their customers tend to talk a lot. And not aside as she said. Find Jiraiya-san, what did you find out? After Jiraiya paid his tab he began to head towards the road with the two of them following him. In two weeks there will be a poker tournament in Tanzaku quarters. She will almost certainly be there. We'll stay in an inn tonight and then get on the road tomorrow, okay you two. The two nodded, it sounded like a good plan. On the road, the next morning. 
They walked along the road as Jiraiya unsealed a water balloon from a scroll before tossing the two scrolls to Hinata and Naruto. Those scrolls are full of water balloons, you will need them for the first step, now watch. He held out his water balloon and it began to become bumpy before it popped, spraying water everywhere. That is the first step, you need to pop a water balloon with chakra by rotating the water. He held up his hand, stopping them. Before you start, let me check something. He placed his hand on top of each of their heads before nodding. Okay Hinata, you are to spin your chakra counterclockwise, Naruto spin yours clockwise. Naruto frowned as he said. What do you mean pervy sage? Gareya sighed as he explained. This is usually explained when genin begin to do advanced chakra control after they have water walked. Now to mold chakra, you mix two different forms of energy, physical energy and spiritual energy, this forms chakra that runs through your coil. Each person's chakra coils are enmeshed and wrapped around every part of their body. But each person's coils are different, some turn clockwise and others counterclockwise. This influences how you can move your chakra. You can figure this out through how your hair is. Do you get what I'm saying? The two nodded to show their understanding as Jiraiya said. Also Hinata, you're not allowed to use your Byakugan while doing this. You need to be able to do this without the Byakugan. It will make it easier in the long run. They both nodded and got to work on trying to pop the water balloon as they walked. Little did they know, they were being watched. On a rock a fair distance away, Itachi and Kissum sat watching the distant outlines of the group. Kissum looked over at Itachi as he said. So how are we doing this Itachi? I mean that is Jiraiya down there. Not only is he an S rank shinobi, but he's also much stronger than Orochimaru. Itachi nodded. That is true, but every shinobi has a weakness. His will be easy to exploit. We will follow them to the next town, then we will need to find an attractive woman. Kissum's face showed confusion. You want to get laid, Itachi. Aren't we on a mission? Itachi barely managed to keep from facipaming. No Kissum, Jiraiya is a notorious pervert. We will use that to our advantage. Kissum grinned when he heard that. Yeah that makes sense, then we take care of the kid. That's a pretty good plan for Itachi. That evening, at the town of Kumakara. The group had reached a new town. Jiraiya led them to a hotel he frequently used when he was in town gathering information. As he checked in, a woman caught his eye. She was beautiful with long black hair and a black dress. She sent him a wink before walking away. Jiraiya's brain stopped working as he passed the two sets of keys to the genin. Why don't you two go up and study a bit? I've got some things to do. Before they can answer here aces off. The two stood there for a minute before Naruto spoke up. You know, I might have believed what he said in the last town if it hadn't been for this scene. Hinata said. I really have lost all respect for him as a person. I didn't want to believe all those stories Kurinai sensei told me. But he's proven them to be all true. Ah, it's not all bad, why don't you two go up to your rooms? I can tell you a bit about my history. Not to mention, I can tell you about my siblings. The two genin headed up to the room. Shortly after two men wearing black cloaks with red clouds entered the hotel and slowly began to head up the stairs. They knew they had plenty of time to confront the young boy. It was once they confronted him that they would be on the clock. Be warned, this section is rated I for infidim. In the room the two genin focused on Shinjetsu as he began to speak. Now don't interrupt me, I plan to tell you about my origins. I also want to tell you about my siblings, in case you ever have to face any of them. Now, as I told you, I have been in the Yuzumaki clan for ages. I was originally forged along with my three siblings by the Sage of Six Paths for his two. Me and one of my siblings went to his youngest son, Asura. Well my other two siblings went to his eldest. Each of us had multiple abilities. But most of our abilities were similar. We all had disguise forms, we all could be repaired with blood, and we were all sentient. I will talk more about my disguise form later. Now, that's where the four of us are different. As you know, I am able to absorb any chakra that comes in contact with my blade. Naruto nodded, he already knew that. What do your siblings do? Well each of us interacts with chakra in a unique way. My sister Hinod, Sunrise, was the staff given to Asura along with me. Her ability allowed her to increase the effectiveness of all chakra-based techniques. Asura mostly used this when he was placing few injutsu based traps or wards. Her disguise took the form of a wire necklace with a small green gem on it. Although she was left with the Senju clan, she rarely picked a wielder from that clan, most of them weren't very skilled in Fuinjutsu. I think her last wielder was Mito Yuzumaki. Then you get into my two brothers who were given to Indra. My brother Bakyaku, Oblivion, was a gun by that could reflect any chakra-based attack back at the enemy with double the strength. Then you had Zencho, Omen, a sickle and chain that would attach to Bakyaku, his ability allowed him to cut through anything chakra-based. The two of them would take the form of a pair of earrings, one with a small shield hanging from it with the other having a small side. 
I remember seeing them in the hands of Madara Chao at one point. Back then I was being wielded by Shanks, I miss Shanks, he always knew how to party. So do you have a disguise form? Oh yeah, I can transform into a black charm bracelet with a crescent moon charm. Okay, so how do I do that? Oh that's really easy, all you have to do is channel chakra into the gem. Naruto did as Shinjetsu said, and the sword glowed before becoming a black bracelet on his right wrist, hanging from the bracelet was a crescent moon charm with a diamond in the middle. Now grip the crescent moon charm and it will change back. This next scene is rated T for troll. Before Naruto could do that though, there was a knock at the door. He sighed as he stood up and walked to the door, Hinata still sitting on the bed but in view of the door. He opened the door as he said. So you got shot down huh pervy he stopped when he saw who was at the door. The first was a tall man with blue skin and what looked like gills, on his back was a bandage package that looked like either a sword or a club. The second was a man who looked similar to Sasuke, he even had the Sharingan. Naruto knew he was Itachi Ichiha. They were both wearing black cloaks with red clouds on them. Itachi spoke up, breaking the tense silence. Naruto, we would like you to come with us. Naruto's mind was running a mile a minute, but when he heard those words, somehow his mind decided to settle on one of the Uzumaki clan's old fallbacks, taunting. Ha, huh, let's think, go with missing Nin. Or stay in the hotel room and continue making out with my adorable girlfriend. Moment he said that, they were all treated to the sound of Hinata squeaking, sounding oddly like one of those squeaky toys people occasionally gave their dogs. Naruto continued what he was saying. I'm pretty sure my girlfriend would be upset if I left her for a guy, especially seeing as we were just making out. So here's what's going to happen, I'm going to go back into this room and continue making out with my adorable girlfriend. You guys will stay out here and not bother us. Now have fun with the whole openly being gay thing. With that Naruto closed the door. Kisum and Itachi were both stunned at what had just happened. Kisum turned to Itachi. Did he just call us gay before closing the door on us? Itachi nodded, his face still as blank as ever. Yes he did. Um, what do you do, do we knock again, or bust down the door? We should knock again, if he ignores us, then we bust in the door. Okay, should we do it now or let him finish making out with his girlfriend? Hearing that Itachi's eye began to twitch, why was he partnered with Kisum again? In the room Naruto had turned to Hinata the moment he closed the door. He made two shadow clones, one of which began to apply the explosive tags he handed it to the doorway. The other into Hinata okay Hinata-chan, here's the plan. That shadow clone is going to apply enough explosive tags to that door to bring down a building. When those two eventually bust in the door it will set off the tags. While that is happening, we are going to head out and try to find Jiraiya. You'll use your Byakugan to help find it, now let's go. The two quickly jumped out the window, leaving the two clones and a rapidly disappearing door behind, just as another knock sounded. A couple minutes later, as they were running through an alley, they both heard an extremely loud explosion. Hinata turned to look at Naruto who looked sheepish. I think my clone used too many tags. Hinata shook her head. Naruto-kun, please try to be more careful next time. Luckily we were the only ones staying on that floor at the time. They continued running trying to find Jiraiya, with help from Hinata's Byakugan. When Naruto was forced to tackle Hinata to the ground as a couple of kunai flew by. He looked up on the roof where they had come from, to see Itachi putting his hand down from a throwing position. He looked like nothing had happened to him, so most likely he had managed to dodge the explosion. Isum stood next to Itachi, his clothes torn up and signed, but a cocky grin split his face. In his hands was a massive sword made of scales, which Naruto recognized from his lessons. He hefted the blade onto his shoulder as he said. You two made a pretty smart move back there. I mean if Samahada hadn't sensed the chakra in those tags, you might have got us. Naruto grinned as he said. Whoever said they were meant to get you. The whole point of it was a distraction. He gripped the crescent moon charm, and Shinjetsu appeared at his side. Naruto quickly drew him and got into position, Hinata quickly following. Itachi sighed as he said. You have no chance Naruto, just come with us quietly. Yeah no thanks, as I told you earlier. My girlfriend would be very upset if I left her for two obviously gay guys. Hissam's grin disappeared as he snarled. How in the world am I obviously gay? Well you're either gay or overcompensating. I mean really, who needs a sword that big? At least Tsubusa could pull it off. Hissam growled as he stepped forward. Why you little? Fuck taking you along quietly, I'm cutting off your fucking legs. Itachi, don't you dare interfere. With those words he jumped down, swinging Samahada as he did. Naruto blocked the blade with Shinjetsu, using both hands to make sure his guard didn't break. Kisum landed on the ground still putting all his weight in the swing when an odd thing happened. Samahada began to cry and thrash, almost as if the blade was in pain. Kisum was forced to pull back. Samahada, what's wrong? Shinjetsu whispered to Naruto. 
Samahada tried to devour your chakra, but he couldn't because you have me on your side. Instead I took some of his chakra. Take advantage of that weakness. Naruto charged forward, sheathing his sword as he did before drawing it out quickly in an Iedo-style slash. Starlight. The slash of the sword left a trail of light behind it as it clashed with Samahada, making the great sword scream in pain once again. Bissam jumped back with a loud curse. What the fuck is going on, how are you hurting Samahada? Suddenly a boy sounded from the roof. That's not the only thing you need to worry about. They all looked up to see Jiraiya, by his side was a large toad wearing battle armor. Itachi landed next to Kissam. We need to retreat Kissam, we can't afford to face Jiraiya at the moment. Kissam nodded as he backed up. You're right Itachi, not to mention, something is up with Samahada. She won't tell me what's going on, all she keeps saying is it hurts. Itachi turned to Naruto as he said. We will be coming for you again, Naruto. With those words he dissolved into crows and disappeared, while Kissam disappeared in a swirl of water. Naruto frowned as he turned to Jiraiya. So pervy sage, any idea why a couple of S rank missing nin are chasing me? Jiraiya gulped as he said. Well I meant to tell you while we were looking for Tsunade, but I didn't expect them to move so soon. Naruto glared at Jiraiya. Explain what exactly pervy sage. Well about the people after you, it's a group of S rank missing nin who are after the Jinchuruki. I thought we would have more time and I plan to train you to prepare for when they began collecting Jinchuruki. It was Hinata who spoke up. Jiraiya-san, you're saying that there are multiple S rank missing nin after Naruto-kun, and you're only telling him this now. Well the plan was actually to tell both of you tonight. But well, you saw what happened. Naruto started to twitch. He had just been confronted by two S rank missing nin. He was certain that the two were sent to counter him specifically, the only reason he even managed to hold his own was because Kissam got cocky and was confused by why Samahata was getting injured. Now he learns that his teacher, who had abandoned the two to chase after a woman. Knowing about the missing nin, he was pissed. Hey pervy sage. When Jiraiya looked at Naruto, the blonde jumped into the air and began to kick Jiraiya in the face multiple times, quickly enough that it looked like he had kicked him once. Mutan shot. Jiraiya was launched into the wall as Naruto started to shout to the heavens. Why is my godfather such a perverted moron, mom and dad, what did I do to deserve this? Amik, Kissam's punishment. A couple hours after the failed attack on Naruto, Kissam and Itachi were walking along the road. Kissam had finally changed his clothes, so he no longer looked like a hobo who had been run over by a cart full of produce. Itachi suddenly spoke up, breaking the tense silence. You do realize that failure was all your fault, correct? Kissam flinched when he said that. He really couldn't deny it. He was the one who decided to break down the door, he didn't even use Samahata. He was the one who triggered the explosive tags. Before he could answer through Itachi turned towards him, his eyes had already shifted to Manjikyu. It's time for your punishment. Tsukiyomi. Bissam found himself in a hotel room. He was in his boxers. He looked around, confused as to why he had been sent here. Usually Itachi's punishments were usually much worse than this. Kissam would soon regret those words. The door to the hotel room opened. Kissam turned to see who had opened it and screamed in terror, clutching his eyes as he did. My eyes, they burn. What had just walked in was the worst thing Kissam had ever seen. Even though he was blue with shark-like features, Kissam was completely straight. This made what he was being subjected to ten times worse. Standing in the doorway was the man who had kicked him in Kanoha, my guy. But instead of wearing green spandex, he was now wearing a very small green speedo. That's when he opened his mouth. Yosh, it is time to stoke our flames of youth Kissam. Kissam's answer was to just scream louder. Meanwhile out in the real world, Kissam was on the ground twitching as his mouth foamed and his face showed abject horror. Itachi shook his head as he shivered. Even I find what I just did terrifying. Hopefully next time he will actually think first. Chapter 5, Meeting the Slug Princess. It had been a week since the confrontation against the Akatsuki. Naruto had dropped the matter after the third day and was currently focusing on finishing the second step of the Rasengan. Hinata had finished the day before and she was waiting for Naruto to catch up. Naruto was very close. He focused on the ball in his hand. As he did he moved his fingers slightly and began to channel the chakra into the ball. After a few seconds the ball explodes violently knocking Naruto on his butt as it did. He shook his head slightly. Well that was a lot more explosive than I meant it to be. Jiraiya spoke up. Well either way, you did well Naruto. Now it's time for step 3. He blew up three balloons, tossing two to Hinata and Naruto before holding his own up. This is step 3. The young couple stood there staring at the balloon waiting for something to happen. It was then Jiraiya held up his other hand and a fully formed Rasengan appeared. This is what is happening in the balloon. The first step is rotation, you did this by rotating the water in the water balloon so it would pop. 
The second is power, you pop the rubber bowl with pure power. The final step containment. If you do it right, you will get this. He lunged at a tree on the side of the road and forced a sphere of chakra against the trunk, shattering it. That is the Rasengan, an air ank ninjutsu. He turned towards them and said. The third step is the hardest part, it is five times more difficult than the last two. I honestly don't expect either of you to finish it during this mission. The two looked at the destruction in shock. This was what the ninjutsu they were learning was able to do. Suddenly Shinjutsu spoke up, interrupting the moment. You know, you never showed these two what Sanadi looked like. How are they supposed to help out with finding her? I mean I know what she looks like, but the kids don't. Gureya froze, he hadn't even realized he hadn't shown them an image of Tsunade. You're completely right, Shinjutsu. He reached into his pouch and pulled out a bounty poster with Tsunade's image on it. This is Tsunade Senju. The two genin looked at the poster before Hinata said. Um Jureya-san, that's a bounty poster. Gureya chuckled awkwardly. Yeah, you see Tsunade loves to gamble. But sadly she is no good at all. The only time she wins is if something bad is about to happen. Naruto spoke up. You said she was your teammate, but she looks no older than 25, what the hell pervy sage. Well you see, Sanadi has developed a unique form of the henge that makes her choose what age she wants to appear as. She mostly uses it to avoid debt collectors. Naruto fascinated. So this is what the great have been reduced to. One of them is a traitorous pedophile. The next is a gambler who never wins. Well the strongest is a pervert who does not respect women's privacy. What is it with powerful shinobi being weirdos? He looked at Hinata as he said. Hinata-chan, I'm going to trust you to keep me from becoming a weirdo like pervy sage. Gureya's face impacted the ground as Hinata giggled. The perverted sage jumped back up as he said. Hey, I'm not an ordinary pervert. I'm a super pervert. Naruto hung his head. What was my dad smoking the day he chose you to be my godfather? The discussion ended and the two genin went back to trying to work on the. Two hours later, the outskirts of Tenzaku. They arrived at the Tenzaku quarters. As they did, Jureya spoke up. Okay, Sanadi should be in this town. I have a really good feeling about it. Naruto deadpanned. That's what you said about the last two towns, pervy sage. Yeah and I was close, my contact said we were just a couple days behind her. For those wondering, no the castle wasn't destroyed by Rachimaru in this AU. I just never understood why he would draw attention to himself like that when he was in a weakened state. They soon found themselves at a casino where Jureya was asking the staff members about Sanadi. As Naruto and Hinata waited, Naruto looked at the slot machine in front of him before pulling out his wallet. Hinata looked at Naruto as she asked. Naruto-kun, what are you doing? He spoke as he slipped a coin into the slot. I just want to try Hinata-chan. I mean Tsunade is addicted to this. I want to know why she enjoys it so much. With those words he pulled the lever. A few moments later, he had hit the jackpot as tokens flowed out of the machine. An hour later, Naruto was walking next to Jureya and Hinata happily with a full wallet and a ceiling scroll full of cash. After he had hit the jackpot on the slot machine. He had then hit a few more by the time Jureya had come back from questioning the staff. Naruto had emptied out 20 slot machines as well as tried his hand at poker. About 5 hands of poker later and Naruto's winnings were over 10 million Rai. Naruto couldn't stop grinning. He had basically won the equivalent of 2s rank missions in an hour. Jureya was looking at Naruto with what could amount to respect. Damn kid, you didn't lose a single time. You're the exact opposite of Tsunade. He, it was really easy. I'll probably store most of this money away for a rainy day. I might try another casino later on. Hinata smiled, she was happy to see her Naruto so happy. Just make sure to stop when you're ahead of Naruto-kun. You don't want to end up like Tsunade-sama. Don't worry Hinata-chan, I won't get addicted. Gureya who was leading them towards a restaurant said. Let's stop in here and get something to eat. Maybe we can get some more information on where Tsunade is. As Jureya pulled back the flaps on the shop he froze and said. No way. He turned to the two genin. I found Tsunade. The two genin followed the perverted sage into the restaurant to see Tsunade sitting at a table with her apprentice, getting completely plastered. Jureya went up to her as he said. Well look who it is, nice to see you again Tsunade Haim. The blonde woman looked up, her cheeks flushed from the alcohol. Huh, Jureya. So today is a reunion of the First Orochimaru, and now you. The two genin both straightened up when they heard that. Naruto did all he could to keep himself from frowning. He knew he was nowhere near strong enough to kill Orochimaru. But it didn't stop him from wanting to put down the rogue. Not only because he killed them. But because the man was a threat that had attacked the village. The three sat at the table and quickly ordered food and made small talk. After getting their food, Jureya smiled at Tsunade and asked. What did Orochimaru want? Tsunade pulled out a deck of cards and began to shuffle them. He told me that sensei was dead by his own hands. 
Is it true? Gareya sighed as he took a sip of his sake that had arrived with his meal as he said. He thought for a moment on what to say to Tsunade. He was certain she was withholding information. After a few seconds he decided to just tell her the full story. Not exactly. Sensei sacrificed his life to stop Orochimaru. He had used the Ido Tensei to revive your grandfather and great uncle to fight Sensei. Upon hearing that Tsunade's eyes went wide, she could barely keep down the anger. Orochimaru hadn't mentioned that. Jiraiya continued after finishing off his saucer of sake. Sensei used the Reaper Death Seal to seal away both of them along with Orochimaru's arms. Jiraiya didn't know this, but his decision to reveal this information would lead to a major change in the very timeline. Tsunade growled upon hearing that. She was pissed, Orochimaru dared to use her family as weapons. Fuck his offer, when she next saw him she was going to kill the damned snake. She spoke slowly, trying to keep the anger out of her voice. So Jiraiya, why are you here? Jiraiya sighed before he spoke. Tsunade, you've been requested to return to Konoha and become director of the hospital. The new is planning to approve of your medic nin program. I was sent to retrieve you and bring you back. Tsunade frowned as she said. Who exactly is the new? Jiraiya grinned as he said. I'm the next Tsunade. Don't worry, I already promised I won't peep while on duty. He continued that speech in his mind. I'll just send shadow clones to the hot spring disguised as Kakashi and Abisu. Little did Jiraiya know, this plan would get an unexpected helping hand from Naruto that would make it foolproof. But that's a story for another time. Tsunade snorted but then turned and focused on the two genin. Who are the kids, Jiraiya? I thought you weren't going to take any more apprentices after Minato died. Not to mention, the girl is a Hayuga. You always said you wouldn't teach a Hayuga. Something about having sticks the size of a tree shoved up their asses. Hinata blushed at that description. Although she couldn't argue against it, as it was an apt description of her former clan. Gureya chuckled before he said. This is Hinata Yell, the former heiress of the Hayuga clan. Former heiress. Yeah, he Ashi had to banish her to protect her. The elders were trying to have her tossed into the cadet family and married off to a noble. Tsunade shook her head. Damn, just when I thought the Hayuga main family couldn't get any worse. So who's the blonde kid? Before Jiraiya could introduce Naruto, Hinata stood up and headed to the bathroom. Once she was gone Jiri's grinned. Ah, this is Hinata's boyfriend, as well as my apprentice, Naruto Uzumaki. Tsunade's eyes went wide as she stared at Naruto for a few seconds, shocked. Shizune dropped her chopsticks while taunting Oink softly. Suddenly Tsunade lunged at Naruto. In Konoha. Sasuke struck the training dummy hard. As he did he grit his teeth to ignore the pain. How dare Itachi enter the village. How dare they not tell him so he could avenge his clan. Didn't those fools understand he had to avenge his family? It was just more proof that the village was holding him back. Suddenly footsteps sounded behind him. He turned to see Sakura coming up behind him. She looked at him and spoke, her voice cheerful as she said. Sasuke-kun, I'm ready to begin training. She was no longer walking with crutches, but she now had a permanent limp. But it wasn't to the point of being completely debilitating. She was the only one who understood what he was going through. What happened in the forest of death had changed her. She no longer was a weak fangirl. Now she was obsessed with revenge just like him. She had begun to train in Jinjutsu using scrolls that Sasuke had retrieved from the Ichiha clan vault. Paired with the training she had been trained in by the retired shinobi her mother had hired. Well she would make a good support for him in battle. The battle against Orochimaru had made him realize two things. First that this village was holding him back. But until he had gotten everything he wanted from it, he would stay. The second was that even if he got stronger, he would not be able to take on all opponents alone. That's why he had decided when he left the village, Sakura would be coming with him. Even with her limp, she would make the perfect partner for battle. She had already agreed. Once they had finished with this village they would leave. Then once they had killed Itachi, they would set their sights on this village. The village that dared to deny him what he deserved. As these thoughts raced through his mind, the mark on his neck glowed red for a few seconds, and the seal holding it eroded a little more. But it went unnoticed to the Avenger, too lost in his thoughts of revenge. Back at the restaurant. Naruto was currently struggling in the grip of Tsunade. The slug had him gripped in an extremely tight hug. Sadly his face was buried in her chest, which was blocking airflow, thus the struggling. He wasn't being helped because Jiraiya was laughing his ass off, Hinata was in the bathroom, and Shizune didn't dare to try and separate the two. All the while Tsunade is crying tears of joy. Happy that the closest thing she had to a grandson was alive. She had been told he had been killed by the Kaiubi during the sealing ritual. That it had managed to impale Naruto before being sealed away, thus killing them both as the Kaiubi was sealed into a dying host. As she hugged him and cried, she slightly swore revenge on Orochimaru for lying to her about Naruto. In an undisclosed location. 
Orochimaru was being treated by Kabuto when suddenly he sneezed and felt a shiver go up his back. Kabuto looked at the snake in confusion as he said. Orochimaru-sama, are you coming down with something? I don't believe in Kabuto-kun, but for some reason I feel like someone just walked over my grave. Back at the restaurant. After a couple of minutes of this Naruto stopped struggling and just started twitching. That's when Shizun spoke up. Um Tsunade-sama, I don't think he can breathe. Tsunade looked down to see the twitching Naruto and let go of him. Naruto fell into his seat, his face blue as he took deep breaths. I saw a long tunnel, and at the end there was a bright light. Mom and dad were there waiting for me. Everyone sweat dropped hearing that. They honestly hoped he was exaggerating, but oddly enough they couldn't tell if he was. It was at this point that Hinata returned to see a disheveled Naruto and an awkward group. Um, what did I miss? Several hours later, with Jiraiya and Sanadi. The two were currently drinking in a bar. Naruto and Hinata had escorted Shizun to where they were staying so she could book rooms for her and Sanadi. They were going to stay about a week. Sanadi had been absolute about that, wanting to play in the poker tournament. Though that wasn't the true reason. Jiraiya looked at Sanadi as he said. So Tsunade Haim, what's the true reason you want to stay here for a week? Don't give me that lie about the poker tournament. It might have tricked Naruto and Hinata, but I know you too well. Tsunade sighed as she said. As I said, I met Orochimaru earlier today. He wanted me to heal his arms. I assume it was the damage done by Sensei during their fight. He gave me a week to think about his offer. Jiraiya nodded. What did he offer you? Tsunade drained her cup of sake before she said. He offered to revive Dan and my brother in exchange for healing his arms. Gureya frowned. I'm guessing you're not going to take the offer. Tsunade frowned. Not after what I learned. He dared to use my family as weapons, not to mention, he was the one who lied to me about Naruto being dead. I trusted the bastard and it came back to bite me in the ass. Gureya shook his head. It's not your fault. Back then everyone thought he was still a loyal shinobi. I can't help but worry what might have happened if Sensei hadn't found out when he did. Well either way, I plan to teach that pale bastard a lesson. Jiraiya smirked. If you want, I'm more than willing to help out. Tsunade nodded. Thanks for that, you old perv. So tell me about Naruto, I want to learn more about him. I need to make up for leaving Kishina's son all alone. Jiraiya sighed as he muttered. You and I both. He then looked her in the eyes with a grin as he said. Well one thing I know for sure you like. Naruto has insane luck with gambling. Tsunade leaned forward, an eager gleam in her eyes. Tell me more. Four days later. Naruto was in the woods outside of town, in a small clearing. He had been there for the past four hours. Surrounding him were around 60 shadow clones, all separated into teams working on their various projects. Back at the hotel were another 20 working on Fuinjutsu. For those who are wondering why he's using so few shadow clones to train when he can spam them to fill a field, there's quite a simple reason. Remember the more clones he makes, the less chakra they have. So I think 80 clones doing chakra-based training were a good amount. There were around 20 that were practicing the next stage of chakra kunai balancing. Naruto had been practicing this chakra control exercise for the past week. Each clone currently had three kunai balanced on their fingertips. Another two groups of clones, ten each, were practicing the two previous stages of the Rasengan. Jiraiya had mentioned that it would help with his chakra control, not to mention Naruto had noticed that the faster he was able to complete the two previous steps, the easier it got for the final state. The final two groups were working on his elemental manipulation. Meanwhile Naruto himself was practicing his kenjutsu. He had upped his weight yesterday. He was currently at 30 kilograms per limb, with a 40 kilogram weight seal tied around his waist. Naruto stood in front of a training dummy that he had sealed in a scroll. His legs were spread slightly apart as he held his hand on his sheathed blade. Naruto slowly closed his eyes, breathing in and out deeply. Before his eyes shot open and he leapt into the air. Comet. As he came down he drew his blade. The glowing blade left sparkles in the air, outlining the downward right diagonal slash he had just executed. As Naruto landed on the ground he flicked Shinjutsu before sheathing the sword. As he did the training dummy slowly separated into two pieces before falling apart. He smiled as he said. I think I did pretty good. What do you think, Shinjutsu? You're definitely doing well. I was surprised you took to Ryu's Kenjutsu style so well. Ryu is one of Shinjutsu's former wielders and the creator of the Celestial Knight style. Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly as he said. Well, it just feels right to meet Adebayo. Naruto placed his hand on the training dummy and channeled chakra into it. The seal that was engraved into it activated and the dummy repaired itself. There we go. What do you think Shinjutsu should do to spar with some shadow clones? Aren't you supposed to meet with your girlfriend in 30 minutes? Naruto froze before he said. It's been four hours already. Damn, I guess I better pack up and head back. 
He resealed the training dummy and put away the scroll. He then turned towards the clones as he said. Hey, finish up your jobs and then dispel slowly, in teams of two or three. The sound of agreement echoed as the original left the clearing. An hour later. Naruto and Hinata were sitting in a restaurant eating lunch discussing their progress in training. They were both of course still working on the Rasengan, but they were also learning new things as well. Naruto was of course learning more about his style personally. All the while having a legion of shadow clones working on various chakra-based things. Hinata on the other hand had managed to get Sanadi to teach her medical ninjutsu a few days ago. With her kind and caring nature, not to mention the amount of chakra control she had, it was only natural for her to learn medical ninjutsu. She was also planning to learn some when they returned home. Her goal was to be a well-rounded shinobi who could support Naruto. Where Naruto would be using ninjutsu and to control the field while fighting up close with his blade. She planned to learn medical ninjutsu to help support him. She also was thinking of learning to use a weapon. While her gentle step style was devastating, it would not work well against a heavily armored opponent. The whole basis for this was a long-term plan for the two to become combo partners. While many tend to work alone on their missions. There were a few who would pair up with people who complemented their skill set. These partners would always be assigned missions together as they trained for their best techniques to be used in tandem. Good examples of this would be two of Konoha's sword masters, Jeko Heid and Yuga Yuzuki. Before Jeko Heid was poisoned, the two would rarely go on missions without the other. It was a tradition that started in Kumo, but it picked up some steam in Konoha. Kumo's most well-known combo partners were A and Killer B. Naruto swallowed his bite of fish as he said to Hinata. We're going to be heading back to the village in a few days huh? I honestly expected Granny to fight returning to the village. Hinata smiled as she nodded, finishing the piece of pork she had been eating. She couldn't help but grin when she heard Naruto call Tsunade Grandma. When he had first called her that, it had caused an argument until Naruto settled it. By mentioning the fact that Tsunade saw his mother as her daughter, thus she was his granny. I know what you mean Naruto-kun. Although I heard she plans to have you play in the poker tournament before we leave. Naruto chuckled awkwardly as he said. Apparently Pervy Sage told her about what happened at the casino. According to him, I have the exact opposite kind of luck as her. So we should keep an eye out if I ever lose, who knows the moon might drop on us. How are you doing with Naruto-kun? Naruto's head sank. I just can't seem to keep it stable. What about you Hinata-chan? Hinata smiled as she said. Well I'm getting better at it. All the chakra control exercises I did as a child have really been helping. They soon finished their meal and left the restaurant. The two decided to take a walk around the town. They enjoyed the sights and just enjoyed spending time together. They had come to enjoy just being around each other. Little did the two genin know. They were being watched by the two and Shizun. Tsunade had to knock Jiraiya around a few times already for trying to use her grandson as source material. The day Rachimaru specified. Jiraiya, Shizun, Naruto, and Hinata all were waiting in the trees, hidden by seals made by Jiraiya. The seals made them undetectable as long as they didn't move too much or use chakra. They had been waiting there for the past two hours. The two genin had been told of the ambush plan two nights ago. Now the four shinobi were just waiting for the signal. Tsunade walked into the middle of the field where Orochimaru was waiting with Kabuto, the young man from the finals. Orochimaru grinned as he said. Ah Tsunade, I assume you have accepted my offer then. She nodded. Let's get it over with Orochimaru. She held up her hand which was glowing green and started to reach for his arms. Only to be grabbed by the silver-haired medic who frowned as he said. That wasn't the mystical palm. That was an assassination technique that was designed to look like the mystical palm. You were planning to kill Lord Orochimaru. Tsunade ripped her arm away before jumping back. I didn't realize you were such a skilled medic. Well I guess plan A is a bust. Seconds later Jiraiya and Shizun appeared next to Tsunade, shortly followed by Naruto and Hinata. Jiraiya grinned as he said. Well hey there Rachi theme, how have you been? Orochimaru looked at the four with a smirk as he said. Oh I've been pretty well at Jiraiya Baka, I mean I did kill our sensei recently. Jiraiya frowned as he said. Not before he took your arms from you. Now how does it feel to have lost the ability to use ninjutsu? Orochimaru snarled as he said. Not that it matters, I could easily defeat you even with my arms like this Jiraiya Baka. Because I suspected you might fall at Tsunade here. Now Caputo. The silver-haired medic nin pulled something out of his pouch and launched it at Jiraiya. The toad caught it, revealing it to be a glass test tube full of powder. But before he could get rid of it, a kunai that had been launched under its shadow made itself known and hit the tube, breaking the tube and engulfing Jiraiya in the powder. The other four had managed to jump away just in time. Jiraiya managed to wave away the powder before falling to the ground, having trouble orienting himself. He looked up, his eyes unfocused as he said with a slur. What the hell was that? Kabuto smirked as he said. 
Just a special mixer I keep on hand. You see we sensed your chakra in the village when you arrived. We knew you were hanging around Sanadi for the past few days. So when she came here, we were prepared. That poison I hit you with makes it so your body acts as if you're drunk, as well as knocking your chakra control completely out of whack. Ureya tried to stand up but stumbled before swearing. Sanadi frowned as she said. Shizun, try to purge some of that poison out of Jiraiya's body while I hold off Orochimaru. Naruto, Hinata tried to hold back Kabuto. With those words she jumped into the air and brought her heel down where Orochimaru was standing. Leaving Naruto and Hinata to deal with Kabuto. Naruto and Hinata vs Kabuto. Kabuto pushed up his glasses with a smirk as he said in a condescending tone. So we finally get to meet Naruto-kun. You know I really wanted to meet you during the exams, but then you didn't join. It really broke my little heart. Naruto frowned as he clenched the crescent moon on his bracelet. With a small glimmer it transformed into Shinjutsu, his sheath on his hip. Naruto slowly slipped into his stance, while beside him Hinata slipped into her gentle step stance. Kabuto's smirk grew as he went through his hand signs, and his hands began to glow blue. Oh I feel so bad for you too, you have absolutely no chance against me. I'm easily in the same league as Kakashi Haddock. Naruto just couldn't help it, the man had set himself up perfectly. So you're three hours late for everything and read porn in public as well. Kabuto twitched slightly. The response had been completely unexpected. But he quickly recovered and responded with. Sadly Kakashi is all alone in that league. What I meant was I am close to him and strength. Before Naruto could reply Kabuto charged forward, slashing his glowing hands at Naruto. Naruto dodged the strikes and swung his blade at Kabuto who ducked, only to be forced to roll away when Naruto attempted to kick his face. Kabuto got up just in time to be forced to parry a strike from Hinata, but he was unable to counter-attack as Naruto followed up with a kick aimed at his neck. It was less than a minute into the fight and Kabuto was already on the defensive. These two are nowhere near as skilled as me, that much is obvious. But they have amazing teamwork, it's obvious that the two are training to become combo partners. First things first, I need to take one of them out, then focus on the other. Hinata would be the easier choice. He flipped back, dodging a glowing blade before thrusting his hands forward at a rushing Hinata. She managed to dodge the main brunt of the attack, but her right arm was clipped. She flinched slightly but still jumped back. She looked at her arm, there was a rather long cut along her arm, it was obvious he had been going for the muscle, but only got skin. The Budo didn't get a chance to capitalize on the cut as he was forced to duck another kick to his chest. Luckily, neither Jenin had noticed that he had missed Hinata on purpose, sending a signal for a contingency plan he had set in place to start. The two Jenin tried to circle him, something Kabuto blocked by backing up slowly. He couldn't allow them to flank him. It was at that moment that Hinata let out a cry and fell to her knees. Where her ankles had been were two glowing hands. Before the two hands could retract through, Naruto had hit them with a kunai, and they disappeared with a puff. Kabuto swore, he doubted he would have the time to set up another shadow clone. But at least the clone had removed Hinata from the battle. Naruto kept his eye on Kabuto as he moved to stand over Hinata. Hinata-chan, are you okay? She groaned as she lay there. He severed my Achilles heel. I need either Shizun san or Tsunade sama to heal it. Sorry Naruto-kun, I won't be able to help anymore with this fight. Naruto frowned as he observed the two. You two had rather good teamwork, let me guess, you two are training to be combo partners. His smirk grew as he said. Then that means I have weakened you quite a bit, making it easier to kill you. Naruto shot him a grin. Oh really? You mean because it was so difficult before because you're not a combat shinobi? Kabuto managed to keep from flinching. Naruto was right, Kabuto specialized in healing and infiltration. He was nowhere near being a combat shinobi. But he was skilled enough to be able to defeat a genin. Naruto slipped into an Iedo stance before he lunged forward. As he did he pulled out Shinjetsu who was glowing a bright white color and slashed at Kabuto. Starlight. Kabuto bent backwards to dodge the attack, but as Naruto went past him, he stopped and spun, bringing his blade down at Kabuto in a diagonal slash. Comet. Kabuto was forced to drop to the ground and roll to the side. While he wasn't fast enough to avoid getting cut, he took only a small cut along the side. But as he did he made sure to lash out with his scalpels, hitting Naruto's legs, cutting deeply. Naruto clenched his teeth as he pulled Shinjetsu back. Those two slashes were going to affect his movement speed. He had managed to cut into the muscle with one of them. As Kabuto got up, Naruto noticed that the cut he had given him was healing at a visible rate. Damn it, it's obvious he has a healing factor like me. Would impact damage last longer? No, probably would heal just as fast if not faster. I need something that would do a lot of damage. Damn it, I really wish I could use the Rasengan right now. Pretty sure he would have a hard time healing from that. It was at that moment that Karama spoke up. His voice still sounded as if it had come from down a long hallway behind a door. 
You need more hands, use a clone to make the Rasengan while you hold it. Zerudo's eyes went white and he grinned. Good idea Kurama, thanks for that. Now I just need to hold him in place. Before Naruto could put that idea into practice, Kabuto rushed forward. Naruto was forced to dodge one slash before knocking away the other with the back of the blade, before slashing Kabuto across the chest. The medic nin jumped back and glared at the cut. Naruto now had an idea how to hold him in place. He sheathed Shinjetsu making the sentient blade speak up. Naruto, what are you doing? Naruto smiled as he drew a kunai. Trust me Shinjetsu, I got a plan. That's what worries me. Naruto charged at Kabuto, lashing out with kicks using his less injured leg as the pivot. Kabuto responded by swinging his chakra scalpels in an ornate pattern, forcing Naruto to dodge and parry. One of the swings got through and cut across Naruto's chest, the blonde just grit his teeth and used that moment to grab the enemy's free hand and hold it in place before stabbing through it and into his own hand with the kunai. Naruto groaned in pain before he said. You lose Kabuto. He held out his hand and the shadow clothes quickly began to create a blue sphere of chakra in his hand. With a grin Naruto thrust the sphere into the struggling Kabuto's stomach. Rasengan. The sphere impacted Kabuto's stomach, grinding and digging deeper before it erupted and sent him flying, tearing the kunai out of Naruto's hand. Naruto fell to his knees groaning, holding his hand to his chest where a deep cut was found. Kabuto had managed to get one more cut in before he was blown away. After a couple minutes a gentle hand touched his shoulder startling him. He turned to see Shizun. Come on Naruto, let's get you over to Hinata so I can heal you both. She helped him over to Hinata who was still lying on the ground, having managed to roll over onto her back, but didn't dare try to sit up. When they were halfway to Hinata the field erupted into smoke and out of it appeared three massive creatures. A massive purple snake with black stripes. A rust red toad with a pipe in its mouth with a blue vest draped over its body. The final animal was a blue and white slug. Naruto gritted his teeth as he said. Shizun-san, go to Hinata. I'm interfering in this fight. As he said this he pushed Shizun away and began to run through hand signs. Naruto and Hinata vs Kabuto. Winner Naruto and Hinata. During Naruto and Hinata's battle with Kabuto. Tsunade's heel impacted the ground where Orochimaru had just been standing, leaving a crater. She leapt out of the crater at Orochimaru, who was forced to dodge each blow. The experiments he had performed on himself allowed him to dodge all the blows thrown at him with ease. He was the worst opponent for Tsunade who mostly fought with Tejutsu. As Orochimaru jumped back, Tsunade flicked out her left hand as if throwing something. To Orochimaru's surprise a green chain came flying from her wrist. It quickly wrapped around Orochimaru. Tsunade gave a feral grin as she said. Get over here. With a tug she pulled Orochimaru in and hit him hard in the face, sending him flying. After a few moments to recover Orochimaru staggered up as he said. I forgot about Tsunade. Tsunade had used that same tactic several times in the past. Although she wasn't extremely talented with her Yuzumaki Keke Genkai, she still had the basics down. She was the one who had trained Kishina with her chains when they awakened after all. Of course how the two used their chains was completely different. Tsunade used her as a support technique to bring those who kept dodging her attacks close to strike. Well Kishina had been skilled enough to unleash literal bullet hell with her chains. Not to mention the fact she could place seals with her chains. Thus those became her go-to alongside a Kinjutsu. You know they say the mind is the first thing to go. I see that's especially true for you, Orochimaru. With those words she charged at him once again, beginning their game of cat and mouse. This went on for two minutes before Orochimaru was forced to duck under a couple kunai that came from the side. He looked through the corner of his eyes to see Jiraiya coming at him. Although he was not stumbling as much as before, it was clear he was still affected by the drug Kabuto had used. Orochimaru jumped into the air and kicked Tsunade away. As he landed he flung his neck out like a snake, trying to bite Jiraiya. The toad went through a few hand signs before saying. Ninja art. Needle Jizo. His hair grew longer and spiky before covering him. But because of his messed up chakra control, there were holes in his defense. Luckily for Jiraiya, he stumbled and fell over from the increased weight of the defensive hair. Making Orochimaru overshoot and miss him. As Orochimaru retracted his head, he heard a loud crashing sound and turned to see Kabuto get sent flying by Rasengan. Impossible, that brat's just a talentless dead last. Jiraiya spoke up with a laugh. Yet, I was the dead last of our class, but you're too scared to fight me without handicapping me, what does that say Arachi theme? Arachimaru snarled before launching the Kusanagi blade at Jiraiya, who was forced to dodge to the side to avoid the deadly blade. As Arachimaru retracted the blade he cursed to himself. While Jiraiya was greatly weakened from the drug, he was still a threat. If it was just himself and Tsunade he could win, but against both without use of his hands, he wouldn't win. It was then Kabuto appeared at his side. The silver-haired medic coughed blood before he said. Arachimaru-sama, sorry I couldn't defeat the two genin. 
Orochimaru growled before he said. It doesn't matter right now Kabuto-kun, hurry I need to summon Manda. Yes, Orochimaru-sama. Kabuto pulled up Orochimaru's sleeve and smeared blood on the seal before going through the hand signs. Tsunade and Jureya, seeing what the two were doing, responded in kind. Soon three voices shouted out. Summoning Jutsu. The field erupted into smoke and out of it appeared three massive creatures. The first was a purple snake with black stripes. The second was a rust-red toad with a pipe in its mouth with a blue vest draped over its body. The final animal was a blue and white slug. The snake spoke first. Arachimaru, how dare you summon me without my sacrifices? I demand a hundred sacrifices. The Buto spoke up. We are sorry Manda, but it was an emergency. We will have your sacrifices ready next. Silence. The toad Gamabunta blew a smoke ring in Manda's face as he spoke. So all three of us are once again summoned together. Gurea spoke up. You mind helping me out Bunta? Eh, uh, I have been wanting a snakeskin wallet for a while. I'll help you out, Jiraiya. The Tsai spoke up last. Lady Tsunade, am I right to assume we are facing Manda today? That's right, that bastard Arachimaru defiled my grandfather and granduncle's graves. Before Kitsai could answer, another massive plume of smoke rose. Jiraiya smiled when he saw this. Before anyone could speak through a loud roar ripped through the air, and the plume of smoke was blown away to reveal the beast that had been summoned. What appeared out of the smoke plume was a massive dragon. The dragon's scales were red, with what seemed to be white armor. Along its body were multiple colored orbs. It had mismatched eyes that both glowed, one glowed a deep green, while the other was blood red. Unlike the dragon summoned during the invasion, this one had no wings. Yes, it's odd eyes pendulum dragon. I wanted a dragon that didn't fly for this battle. As the last of the smoke cleared the dragon spoke. Its deep voice was obviously that of a male. Ladies and gentlemen. Without further ado, allow me to introduce myself. Today, for your entertainment only, I have prepared a spectacular performance that will leave you with your mouths hanging open. For the first time Pendulum, the Odd Eyes Dragon, has entered the Shinobi world. For my first great performance I shall beat down my summoner's enemy, which is who exactly? Naruto smiles as he says. The big ass purple snake. The dragon seemed to grin. I assume the toad and slug are allies then. Naruto's smile turned into a fox-like grin. Yep, the toad and slug were summoned by the two loyalists of the village. The snake was summoned by the man who instigated the attack on my village close to a month ago. Well then how am I supposed to ignore my adoring public? It was as if Pendulum's words were the signal. Manda lunged at Gamabunta, who was forced to block the attack with his tanto. As he was blocking the snake's attack Kitsaya began to spray acid at the snake who dodged out of the way. It was then that Pendulum entered the fight. He charged at Manda and struck out with his claws, which were covered in a dark red and black energy spiral strike claw. Manda managed to twist his body out of the way so the claws struck the ground. Upon impact the energy released and blew a crater in the ground. Manda, taking advantage of that, lunged at Pendulum, but the dragon spun and smacked the snake's face with his tail, knocking the massive snake back. Sadly the location Manda was knocked back to was where Katsaya had slithered to so she could get a clear shot at Manda. Upon impact, Manda quickly recovered and wrapped around Kitsai, seeking to crush her. In response Tsunade leapt off of Kitsai. Once Tsunade was clear Kitsai broke into smaller pieces, making Manda lose a grip. Just in time to be met by Pendulum's tail once again. As he was knocked back Jurasa shouted to Gamabunta. Bunta, bring the oil. Gamabunta took in a deep breath before spraying a large amount of tote oil at Manda. As he did that Jurasa released a stream of flames from his mouth. Fire style. Toad flame bomb the flames and oil turned into a massive wave of fire that impacted on Manda. After a few seconds they stopped releasing flames. Jiraiya frowned as he saw the burning corpse. Damn it, Manda shed his skin, keep an eye out. As Kutsai reformed the other two summons began to look around. It was then Manda erupted from the ground behind Gamabunta, lunging at the toad. Gamabunta's tanto was knocked out of his hands and he was forced to catch Manda's maw with his hands. God damn it, someone come help me. Naruto leaned down and whispered to Pendulum who let out a growl. Blonde lady, get on my tail. Not asking about what was going to happen Tsunade jumped onto the dragon's tail who then spun, launching her at the tanto. Seeing what was planned she grabbed the tanto, using it to flip herself around and pulled it out of the ground before tossing it down through Manda's jaw, knocking him into the ground pinning him. But before the snake could reverse and summon himself home, Pendulum took a deep breath and released a stream of black and red energy shaped like a drill. Spiral strike burst. The stream of flames hit Manda's head and destroyed it, killing Manda. Pendulum slowly walked up to the snake. I don't sense the two humans who were riding on the snake. I guess they escaped. Well I would say that was a great first performance. Pendulum lowered his head so that Naruto could get down, while Gamabunta let down Jiraiya. 
Kitsai is sent about towards Tsunade before returning home. Shortly followed by the Gamabunta. Pendulum on the other hand took another bow before disappearing. Tsunade began to heal Naruto's wounds. The same wounds that had been healing during the fight. She was done in a couple minutes. It was at that point that Jiraiya spoke up. Arachimaru and Kabuto managed to escape, damn it. Oh shut up Jiraiya, we'll get another chance eventually. Now get over here so I can finish purging that drug from your system. Jiraiya was forced to be quiet through the application of a fist to the skull. While Tsunade was healing him, Hinata came up and hugged Naruto. I'm happy you're okay Naruto-kun. I was worried when you were forced to fight Kabuto alone. I honestly got lucky. If Kaiubi hadn't given me a hint on how to stabilize the Rasengan, I likely would have lost. Jiraiya and Hinata knew about Naruto's attempts to befriend Kurama. So there was no problem in telling her what happened. It was at this moment that Tsunade walked over with Shizune while dragging an unconscious Jiraiya, who she had to knock out after he made a perverted comment. Let's get back to the hotel. Tomorrow is the poker tournament, then we need to go back to Konoha. The two gen in sweat dropped hearing this Naruto leaned over and whispered to Hinata. I thought the poker tournament was just an excuse to stick around for a week so we could ambush Orochimaru. Hinata responded with just as quiet a tone. That's what I thought as well Naruto-kun, but it seems that's not it at all. Tsunade turned to Naruto as she said. As for you Naruto. Close your eyes for me. Naruto did as she said. A few seconds later he felt something fall around his neck and then a pair of lips touch his forehead. He opened his eyes to see Tsunade smiling at him. Make sure to achieve your dreams Naruto and give me great grandchildren to spoil. So I can make up for not being able to spoil you. It was at that moment that the necklace began to glow and floated before lifting off of Naruto's neck and flew to land in Hinata's hand. Naruto looked at the glowing necklace in confusion. What just happened? Before anyone could answer, the gem glowed brighter before changing into a black monk staff. At one end were several metal rings, and hanging from one of the rings was the gem. It was at the moment that a gentle female voice sounded from the gem. Finally, a new wielder, it has been too long. I haven't sensed such a compatible person since Hashirama. Although I'm surprised at the one who's able to wield me, being from Himura's line. Shinjetsu spoke up in surprise. Huh, Hinode so you finally decided to wake up huh? I couldn't help it, Shinjetsu, she's got an aura as I haven't sensed since Hashirama. Shinjetsu sighed as he said. Well congratulations Hinata, you have a new weapon. You're the proud owner of my sister, Hinode. Tsunade spoke up. What is going on, why did my grandfather's necklace change into a staff? Shinjetsu sighed. That's a long story about Tsunade. Amic, Naruto rakes in the cash. It was the finals of the high stakes poker tournament. Only two people still had chips. One of them was a 25 year old man named Karito Tachibana. He was a well known gambler who had won close to 20 different poker tournaments. His pile currently had 10 chips in all. He grinned as he pushed his last 10 chips in. I'm all in. He threw his last 10 chips in, he was certain he could win this hand. He highly doubted the kid could beat a straight flush. Across from him was Naruto Uzumaki, the kid's pile was massive, his face could barely be seen behind the pile. His hand came up and threw in the 10 chips. Garrido grinned as he tossed his hand down. Beat that kid, a straight flush. His hand had 5 spade cards, a 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Garrido nodded. That's a really good hand. Garrido grinned as he reached for the pot, but then Naruto continued speaking. Just not as good as a royal flush. He threw down his card to reveal a royal flush of hearts. Garrido saw the cards and began to twitch. As he did the voices of the spectators began to register. That kid didn't lose a single hand the entire tournament. He won what, 30 million Ryo? The officials had to check if he was cheating 10 different times, they switched decks 5 times. The kid has the devil's luck. Garrido's face planted as he began to sob, how did he lose so badly? The next comment from the spectators sent him over the edge. That's not the worst part of it, I don't think the kid really knew more than the basics when he started playing. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. Karito Tachibana began to cry, he had lost to a complete amateur. He was never going to live this down. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video.